Happy, happy, happy new year. Welcome everybody to the Inner Beauty TV. I'm your host, Nicole Michelle, founder and femininity mentor for the Inner Beauty Movement. We're all about helping high achieving, beautiful, attractive, no nonsense, elite women find their way to their feminine core, their essence, their values, while simplifying the pathway to marriage. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, definitely give us a follow, a like, a subscribe, a share, spread the word about us. We are here in effect. Like the stream. I love those that like the stream, like the stream, share the stream and all of that. I appreciate that. Happy birthday to Miss Devin in the chat. I appreciate that. <laughs> Shout out to everybody that's listening to me live. I appreciate you. We have a lot to cover. It won't be too long, but a couple of things we want to get out of the way and then we'll get into our main topic. I just want to say happy, happy, happy new year. Um, I am refreshed from taking a few days off. My brain never stops moving and working, but I'm back with some brand new content. I'm sure to delight you. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about was this topic here today. So um, I'm excited about it. I did have some other things that um, I wanted to cover and we will get to those things, but shout out to everybody joining me live on the YouTube side. I appreciate that. And for those of you on other platforms, you can hit the link at the top and join us. What we're going to cover today, let's start with letting you know who we are and what we're about. I'm Nicole Michelle. And for those of you who don't know me, I have been around in the relationship um, sector niche for close to 10 years now. And I didn't put my whole two feet in it until around 2016 and 17 when I started making guest appearances on different podcasts and different YouTube channels. And then my first book came out in 2017. And that's when I made my debut to YouTube it was 2018, which is where most people know me. And then I really didn't get involved into Instagram until 2019, 20, somewhere in there. And then um, I kind of grew after that. And then my first course was released. I want to say 2018, the fall of 2018 was the release of my very first femininity course. And for those of you who got the first, got in on the first, you understand a lot of growing, a lot of elevation in my delivery content wise and everything. So we've, we've grown. And to those of you who've been around since before uh, the book was released, um, I, I know who you are. Don't, I don't forget. I know who you are and thank you for supporting me. And we're growing, we're growing. Um, our clients are getting married. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to uh, the young lady that sent me the message. I'm not going to put her out there until she releases the testimonial, um, a formal testimonial. But she sent me a message saying that she tied the knot a month ago, all because of the work we do here at the Inner Beauty Movement. So we are constantly producing women that want to work on their femininity. They want to elevate in every area of their life. We're also helping women get married. <clears throat> now, my specialty is helping women um, get with traditional men, uh, attract traditional men for traditional structured marriages. However, I can help women of all uh, ages, uh, of all kinds of marriages, you know, uh, the dual income earning marriages as well. I can do those in my sleep. So if you're on the YouTube side, Hit, put a one in the chat and make sure my audio is good before I go deep into everything. <laughs> I just want to make sure my audio is on the up and up. Um, happy New Year to everyone. I love you all. Thank you so much for showing up. Just hit a one in the chat if you can hear me on the YouTube. All right. All right. We're in business. Okay. So that's what we're about here. And 
I am a follower of Christ. I, I make no bones about that. I don't hide that. And so um, a lot of my content will have a Christian ethos to it. I don't hide from that. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and, and family is to the forefront. Our three pillars of the inner beauty movement is faith, family, and femininity. Those are our three pillars. And so we talk about family, we talk about faith, and we talk about femininity right? And we talk about all of that and all of that all up and through there. (laughs) And so marriage is part of that. And so femininity is one of those things that I I focus on, but I also focus on the marriage part and helping women get into traditional structure families because those men move a different way. So that's what I'm about. And because of that, I call myself you're Naomi and you're my Ruth. If you allow me to be your Naomi, I will guide you like Naomi guided Ruth. And so I will be your personal Naomi. What's new? What's coming? What's new? What's new? Now, I promised you all at the end of last year that Tony and I would release our podcast. I did keep my promise. It was uploaded in December, although I I did not advertise it. But if you're in my Patreon Uh, Those of you still lingering in my Patreon, you saw the notifications that it was there. It is up and ready for public consumption. So you can go sign up for that. And it's a, a real meager price to get access to that exclusive content that no one else has heard. Me and Tony just unfiltered. And you know how colorful Tony is. So uh, just you and him and I just kind of shooting the breeze, talking about different topics. And it's going to be fun because we have some really good co- topics, really good stuff up the um, um, up up our sleeves here. So but um, if you've kind of liked us and how we go back and forth on different other platforms, then you really like the Salt and Honey podcast. And that is available now on Patreon. There are some other things that I'm going to uh, fix on Patreon. Now, for those of you who have been a patron of mine before, I have redone and totally revamped my Patreon. So it is not the same. It is Nicole Michelle unfiltered. So there are a lot of audios on there that you have not heard. I have not released publicly, but it is me unfiltered giving you the unfiltered Nicole Michelle. And the my archive videos will be forever sunset they're not coming back so if you didn't hear them in my patreon before they're forever gone sorry uh, some of those will be edited and chopped up and used in other areas but they will not be for public consumption if you are in patreon i take that back if you are on the feminine elite society app you will get access to some of those some 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 of those archive videos and tidbits and stuff that I think is uh, pertinent to your elevation, you will get access to those archive videos, but they, they were our forever uh, sunset. So, so shout out to those of you who joined the Patreon. Um, let's just say my Patreon is going to be next level because not only will I have stuff on there for elevation, your aspiring socialites, most of that stuff the really good meat and potatoes will be on the app because that's just, I just can't, you know, that's just for people that are really willing to, you know, um, and the app is really a more sophisticated, um, way for, you know, high achieving women to really, it's away from the hoi polloi and the generalizations. And it really hones in on your elevation, uh, aspiring socialites, women that really want to marry well, women that really want to elevate their quality of life. That information will be on the app because that is not to be televised. That is to be for women that are serious about it. But the Patreon is going to have some of the same content, but It's going to be, you just have to look around. Um, I'm going to put entrepreneurial stuff on there because just me mentioning a business course, I've gotten four or five messages from different women saying, when is that coming out? Ladies, that the plan for that wasn't until 2025 because that is not my niche. Business is not my niche. I was just doing that as a passion project to help women make money. That is not something that I want to put ahead of helping people get married. (laughs) That's not what I want to do. However, I will make 
my knowledge available to women who want to become entrepreneurs and they want to figure out how to make money. Like, for instance, I can show you how to make a quick $1,000 in a month without having to manipulate, lie, steal, scheme, or whatever, just a legitimate businesswoman. And it won't be a Ponzi scheme. I don't want any of your proceeds, any of your profits. It's all your money. I'm just sharing with you business do's and don'ts that I've learned and, and that I paid thousands of dollars for <laughs> to understand. I will still pass that on and help women. Um, but I'm going to be honest with you. I really want to gear that towards women that have already worked with me because they know how I, how I am. And it's for women that are already wives and women that have worked with me before. I, I kind of want to center them first and then roll it out to everybody else. So the way I'm going to do that is through Patreon. It will be an area for women that want to focus on business. And I will pour that stuff in there when I get time, because that is not my priority. My priority is getting women married and my current clients. Speaking of current clients, a shout out to those ladies that enrolled in the good girl method. You will find 2024 will be good for you. Um, and for uh, all those other ladies who signed in the Future Wives Mastery Program and the School of Feminine Arts Signature Program, shout out to you ladies. I'm excited about meeting you and I'm excited about helping you reach your next level. And other courses coming. Um, we have courses that I'm working on that are coming that I'm sure to uh, delight you and meet your needs. And also for those of you who are more on the conservative slant, um, that podcast is up the pink elephant and it's a little award winning podcast. I didn't think anybody was really listening to it. <laughs> um, it's just me just kind of letting some steam off and how I feel and, um, and how I approach politics. I don't talk about politics on my channel, on my platforms. I try to stay away from that. But that is something that I want to talk about. So I created the Pink Elephant Podcast. That has nothing to do with my courses in any of that. It has completely different content. And if you're not conservative or don't or not open politically, I don't advise you to listen to it because you will get upset and triggered. So it's not for super liberal people and it's not for people that are not Christian. I'm just going to tell you that right now. That's a space for Christian conservatives to kind of let their hair down and kind of hear the stuff that matters to them. So that's the Pink Elephant Podcast. And that's available on pretty much any platform that holds podcasts, Spotify, Apple, uh, uh, Apple, Google, you name it, we're there. All right. Amazon, you name it, we're there. The goal of this year is to see as many women elevated as possible. I hold myself to a high standard. I don't just, you're welcome, baby. Happy birthday. I hope you have a pleasant day. Check your, check your cash app in the next day or so. Maybe today, just send me a message and remind me, I'm going to send you a gift. Um, the goal of this year is to help as many women elevate as possible. I hold myself to a strict standard. I don't just get on the mic and just say stuff and just tell you it's the gospel of Nicole Michelle and therefore just trust me. No, I want you to see the people that I've helped. I want you to see me hold myself to a standard and I want you to come back and tell me what worked and what didn't work. Well, Miss Nicole, you said to do X, Y, Z. I want you to come back and give me a report. I don't run from you. I don't run. I don't uh, run from people. Come back and I don't just say stuff and then disappear. I'm here every Tuesday. <laughs> and it, so you can come back and, hey, Miss Nicole, um, what did you mean by this? Or what, you know, um, this happened and I took your advice and this happened. I'm not going to run because because I know I'm, I'm I speak with my whole chest in all confidence that what I'm telling you works. That's why I don't run, because I know what I'm telling you works. I'm that confident in my skill set. I'm confident in what I'm telling you, and I know I know what I'm doing. And so I don't run from you. I don't run from one-on-one -on -one sessions with you. I don't make one-on-one -on sessions so unaffordable that to avoid talking to you. I want to talk to you. I want to get to know you. I want to build a rapport with you, because when I looked at my scores because I score myself. The women that I had more conversations with did better overall than women that I either had one conversation with or never talked to me one-on-one. -on -one. 
So that let me know that some women do need to have a one-on-one Naomi Ruth connection with me. And that's what I'm here to um, provide you. I do not run from you. I'm not a coach that just puts information out there for you to buy and then I disappear. No, nope, I'm here every week. I pop up on different platforms. I'm not running from you. All right. So now that we've covered that, let's get into the meat and potatoes of what we're talking about. We're talking about today why he stopped chasing you. And I will um, allow an open space at the end for questions because this one I, I know is going to spark some questions, I assume, maybe. <laughs> so if you can hold on to your questions to the end and type them for me on the YouTube side, I will highlight your question because I'm sure other women have the same question. Why he stopped chasing you is a good question. It's a good topic to broach because a lot of a lot of times we talk about this in the way of how to get him to pursue. But I was, you know, I want to offer content on why he may stop pursuing. Now, this is not for you to lament over forever and amen. This is not for you to sit and blame yourself like it's all your fault either. Because sometimes it's just out of your control and it's just something you can't control. And it's it's something going on with him. So I don't want you to internalize this like, oh, Miss Nicole is making it all about women. And I'm not because, again, you're dealing with other people. So it's never 100% your fault. Also, <laughs> um, it, it's important to understand why people stop pursuing so that you know if it is something that you can it's an area of opportunity for you. You can fix it. For those women that say, hey, you know what? If he doesn't, if you, if you take the posture that, hey, if he doesn't like me and he walks off or he gets inconsistent or he's not around, then you, forget it. That's just not my guy. That is true. <clears throat> but you don't want to take the posture that you never want to do some, some type of introspection and you never want to dissect what happened and you never want to try to take accountability for it. You never want to take that posture. I assure you women who take that, that posture will forever in a man be single. I can assure you, I promise you that. And I put that on my name. <laughs> women who just like, Oh, well, he didn't like me. So what I'm moving on those women will remain single. Women who say, you know what? Let me see what's going on. Is there an area of opportunity for me? That is a woman that is preparing to be married. Look, thank you, Phineas, uh, Phineas Hishaw, for the $10 super chat. I appreciate that so, so very much. Sending the tip jar, my very first super chat of the year. I appreciate that so, so very much. And to all of you sending me cash apps, I appreciate that. I don't typically check my cash apps to the end of the program so I can stay focused. So I appreciate that. Thank you so, so much, sir. Listen, all of us has, have to prepare for marriage. This isn't just if you come from a perfect background, if you're a certain race, if you look a certain way, you don't have to prepare. All of us have to prepare for marriage, ladies. Okay. All of us have to prepare for marriage. So never take the posture that you have it all figured out. Those women will stay single. I assure you they will. Why he stopped chasing you is important. It isn't always your fault, but sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. It isn't always your fault, but sometimes there are areas of opportunity. And we're going to talk about that. Let's go. Some things you can't control. Some things you can and we're going to talk about the things that we can control. Let's get this one out of the way. He's just not that into you. Let's just get that out of the way. Some men stop pursuing because they're just not that into you. This is kind of like a given, but I want to get this out of the way <laughs> because a lot of times when you go to a lot of male coaches, they'll this is their favorite one. He's just not that into you as if that's the sum total of why men stop talking to you. And it's it's more nuanced than that. It this is true. This is the more common one. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to you. It is the most common <laughs> reason why it's just, it's just summed up. It's just like an umbrella reason. It covers pretty much everything. He's just not that into you because when a guy is interested in you, 
especially if he's highly attracted to you, he he tends to overlook a lot of things and give you a little bit more grace. The more attracted he is to you, the more he feels uh, um, compatible with you, uh, the more he's daydreaming about you and all of these things that none of that has anything, you know, anything to do with you. He's just coming to you with that type of energy. He's going to give you more grace, right? But if he's not interested in you, he's just not interested in you. And he has a lot of options. Maybe he has a lot of options and that's not, that's why he's not interested in you. A lot of times, a lot of guys with a lot of options are spread thin with a lot of women. So he might be attracted to you and like you. He's just, he is, a, I, it's, he has a personal uh, rotation, but he also has a personal hierarchy. So not only does he have a higher, there's a hierarchy in the sexual market, he might have a personal hierarchy. Well, you know, she's well connected and beautiful. This one can cook, but she's not that cute. This one is super freaky, but, you know, she's hard to deal with. Like he has a hierarchy of women and you're, you're new and you're attractive. He, he doesn't have time to figure out where you fit in the hierarchy. And it could just be he's not that attracted to you yet. It could just be he's just he's spread thin with all of these women and his and his job and personal life. He just doesn't have time to figure out where you belong. And so you just kind of fall at the wayside. Those guys kind of tend to orbit back to you anyway. And <laughs> they just do. They orbit back to you. Oh, I wonder what happened to her. And so those women who tend to give off desperate energy, which I will talk about, those women kind of where if they just fell back and weren't so desperate, he actually would have come back with more attraction because she wasn't desperate. But I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Those guys, when they are spread thin, somebody ends up falling out of his rotation and he's looking to replace those women and he'll fall, he'll orbit back to the women that he you know, miss those connections where he didn't go out with, he didn't sleep with, and he'll come back. And you're like, wait a minute, who is this guy? Wait a minute. This was six months ago. He still has my phone number. <laughs> and that's why it, 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 sometimes it has nothing to do with you. He's just spread thin. He just has a whole lot going on, a whole lot of women. <clears throat> and he just didn't have time to fit you in. And so he's going to come back to you. Right. Um, his valuable time is going to go to those women that are already in his rotation. So when one of those women screw up, then that's, that's your end. <laughs> that's your end. That's when he makes room for newbies. And that's when you get called and text. And, and that also explains why some guys go ghost because, um, you know, his rotation becomes solid. And <laughs> she said, it happens every homecoming. Absolutely. And, Somebody falls out of good graces with him and then he looks to replace that girl and then he may come calling for you, start calling and texting and you think you're in there good. And then that girl, because he's he may be really highly attracted to her, she's going to make amends and she's going to come back and make it good. And now she's back in the rotation. Well, now his his slots are filled. He's he's spread too thin. So until someone else screws up, you, you're back by the wayside. And that's where that hot and cold comes from. He's hot one minute and cold the next. And then he pops up six months later. Hey, what's up? Like nothing ever happened. That That's because that's going on. There's always another woman. Okay. Rule of thumb. It's always when you first meet someone. And I just had to share this with a client. So she inspired this. When you first meet someone, assume he already has women he's dating. But you, it's really up to you to kind of inspire him to leave those women alone. We expect to meet a guy that has it going on, especially the masters of the universe, because that's what we talk about a lot here. The masters of the universe, the gentlemen, the, the blue chip type fellas we love. We expect them to not have anything working when we meet them. Okay, that's unrealistic. That's kind of the Lulu land. Most of these guys have several women. <laughs> and so for you to walk in his life and if he tells you he is not seeing anyone, he's not being completely honest. He is seeing someone, even if he's just smashing her. Okay. 
even if he's just having sex. That's rule of thumb and that's to protect your energy. So go in there knowing, okay, we either make it or not. And I cannot just, and, and a lot of women walk around, oh, he's lying. These men are lying because you expect a new man to come to you and tell you about his rotation. That's, in, that's insane. He's not going to tell you about his rotation. It's for you to be that type of woman that makes him want to give them up. That's how that works. Men are hunters. They're always going to have a stable of women. That's just what they do. That's just, that's part, that's, they're, it's a numbers game with men. It's a numbers game. And every married woman will tell you uh, that her husband let go of all those other women, those miscellaneous strings hanging when he met her. Okay. Uh, move over bacon. Now it's something leaner that's in the building, right? He had to let all those women go. So it's easier for you mentally to just assume he has other women. It's just, it's just, now, when you are in a committed relationship, that's something different because he's pledged his loyalty to you. That's a character flaw. But to meet him off of the, just, you just met him, first conversation, and you want him, the golden words to you is he's not me, he's not um, dating anyone else. That means that you're a woman that you expect to get a master's of the universe without competing. Sorry, impossible. It's not happening. Okay, it's not happening. That's weird. <laughs> That's weird energy. It's impossible for you to get a Masters of the Universe man. It's impossible for you to get just, just about any type of man without some level of competition because there's other women out there that find him just as attractive as you find him. And they see the value of him just like you do. And they're going for broke too. So I'm not saying get out here pulling hair and pulling out weaves and wigs and puncturing tires for the love of a man. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying that you do need to show up in the market about yourself and thorough so that he's, oh, this one's different. Let me switch up. Let me come to her correct because this one's different. That sets the tone and that gets rid of that, that rotation. And maybe down the road, I may do uh, a broadcast about how to outdo the, the, the rotation. I have done it before. I think I did it on Clubhouse a couple of years ago, but I will redo that for YouTube. Uh, how to get rid of that, how to outperform the rotation, because really it's easy to get rid of his rotation. It's so easy. Right. And he's just not the end to you because maybe he was just curious about you. There are guys that see you, they see you around. They may see you at work. They may see you at in running in the same social circles. People have mentioned you, you're kind of, you, you know, you're attractive and he's curious about you, but not necessarily interested in you in that way. So he'll call you a couple of times because he wants the deets about you. He wants to know who are you? Where are you from? Why do you move this way? Who are your people? You know, who are you connected to? They really want to know, are you the real deal? Right. And they're kind of like semi interested in you. Sometimes they really are interested in you, but not really. But they're more curious than anything. And so they'll ask you for your phone number. They may even go out on a date with you. This is curiosity driven. And it's pretty much nothing you can do about that, ladies. That's just on him. Give me a second, ladies. Yeah, curiosity killed the cat, and that's why he's reaching out, right? The next one is he's lukewarm attracted to you. He's kind of attracted to you, but not enough to really pursue you for anything serious, anything long-term. It's sort of like a surface attraction. He wants to, he's looking at your IG. He's looking at your socials, and you're extremely attractive, especially more on the sexual side. Hello, ladies. And so he's curious. He wants to tap it, right? And so he's just kind of lukewarm interested. He's lukewarm interested. So he will still pursue and chase until he gets what he wants, right? He's lukewarm interested in you because <clears throat> you, you may not be his first choice. So like you might be 
um, in, running in a circle of women and he really likes your friend, but then he starts rapping to you, um, situations like that. You might be the wing girl and he starts talking to you because the woman that he really wants is not really showing him any rhythm. This happens a lot with old school players. I got to give up the game. Got to give up the game. You're about the players. What will happen is they, they kind of pit women against each other. So the woman that he's attracted to is where really where his, uh, his um, energy is going. He's really attracted to Lady A, right? So let's say it's two ladies together. He's attracted to Lady A, but he's afraid of rejection. So what he'll do is he'll spit game to Lady B. And, and let's say you're Lady B. That's lukewarm attraction. His attraction is really for Lady A, but he's afraid of rejection from her. What he's intending to do is incite jealousy from Lady A, seeing you and him form this connection. And because he's inciting jealousy from Lady A, because in her mind, she's supposed to be prettier anyway than you, right? He's um, gearing his attraction to Lady B. He's hoping that Lady A will show some jealousy. And that in its rawest, rawest form, is showing him that she is attracted to him. And yeah, he can go ahead and, and, and spit game to her. Does that make sense? So it guarantees that he won't be rejected because she's showing interest from, you know, seeing him talk to Lady B. And Lady B in this case might be you. Does that make sense? This will explain, especially if you all say, oh, we're just hanging out. We're not really good friends. One woman that's choosing him is going to say, oh, she's all right. We just hang out together. That's his green light. And some men don't even need this green light. Let's just be honest. Um, <laughs> that's his green light to pull this trick. And sometimes he doesn't even need this green light. He barely even knows you. So he'll come up, especially at bars, which is really where this really gets off bars, places where people are just free mingling and he sees women together. What he'll do is he'll go get the least attractive woman in the group, especially this works really well with players uh, with the pretty boys do this real well. The pretty boys do this because the pretty girls expect the pretty boys to go after them uh, anyway, because she's pretty. Right. But what he'll do is he'll go get one of the least attractive, maybe not the least, but one of the least attractive women in the group. He won't get the eight, nine or 10. He'll get the five or the four. And then he'll start talking to her. And then he's hoping he's really afraid the eight, nine or 10 will reject him. So he's hoping by talking to the four or the five, the eight, nine or 10 to get jealous. And then she'll express some interest in him. And then he can start talking to her. Well, you know, I always wanted you. I had my eye on you the whole time. I didn't know if you liked me, blase, blase. And now he's free and clear and he doesn't have to get rejected. It's, it's kind of stupid. It's immature. But men still do this in the year of 2024. <laughs> they still do it, ladies. They still do it. Don't be victim of this. And so sometimes when he stops pursuing, it could be this, unfortunately. Right. Sometimes he has a lukewarm attraction to you. Sorry, ladies. Sorry. But sometimes it's because he needed a win. Respectfully. Sorry. He needed a win. He needed a woman to choose him because he's had a series of rejections or he's in between relationships or he's super horny. Something's going on to where his love life has been interrupted or there's a snag or a pause he needs a win and he needs one quick. And so he's going to reach out to a woman that he feels is an easy win. Not necessarily sleep with you, but just a win. He just needs a woman to choose him back and quickly. So he has perceived you lovely, incorrectly, of course, because you're awesome. He's perceived you as being easier to get. So he's going to go all in trying to secure this approval from you, but he doesn't, he's not going to do anything with it. And that's why he stopped chasing, right? 
Rhythm and Wander, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Is it Delulu to desire men who are sexually disciplined? I hate the idea of dating a guy who's promiscuous that doesn't show ready for marriage. Asking because you said men will always have women. Yes, most men are not traditional and they are seeing several women at a time. Ladies, here's the thing. If you want a super sexually disciplined man and um, those guys pretty much are held by a higher calling. Like they are into the Bible. They, If you want a guy like that, he exists, but you need to match his energy. So you can't, you have to be sexually disciplined too. That means you may not get, have sex until marriage. Are you okay with that? Be careful what you ask for. You want to, and, and, and Hey, this is a noble request, right? Because if you're sexually disciplined, you want him to be sexually disciplined. I just want you to know having a sexually disciplined man may mean you don't have sex until your wedding night. If you're okay with that, just be careful what you ask for, because this is not the guy that's going to turn up with you on the third date because he likes you. You want him to be sexually disciplined. So that's across the board. All right. Um, and so you think, um, you know how men assume that a woman is dating men. She's sleeping with him. That's kind of what you all do with them. So um, you can't assume that because he's, you can safely do that because he's a man. You can. However, here's the thing though. <laughs> If you're dating a man that's not traditional, nine times out of 10, he does have a rotation of women, especially if he's a, a, a masters of the universe, a blue tip, a blue chip type of guy. He's got women and he's sleeping with women. You've got to know that. Sorry. That's why I love traditional men, because they are sexually disciplined and they can tell you, no, you can be the sexiest woman in the room and he can still tell you, no, I love those men. And they match my energy because I'm not pressed to have sex either because I want uh, a man I can trust. He says something, he does it. He's uh, highly moral, uh, high character. Uh, and so that that's that's the thing. So if that's so nasty that he's sleeping with several women, understand understand you have to meet him with that same energy. Make sure your your life matches his because you can't be – all super hot under the collar, but you want him to be sexually disciplined. That's not going to work either. So I'm just saying that guy is out there <laughs> just saying you can't be, you know, feeling all on him. And then you expect him to say, no, that's, that's not how that works. Okay. So if you want a sexually disciplined man, make sure you're sexually disciplined and you can wait till your wedding night, because that's more often than not going to be, you know, or he could he could pass. He he actually wants to build a rapport with you before having sex with you. Can you wait? A lot of women can't wait. You're more hornier than he is. Okay. I'm just being real with you. Some of you want to have sex more faster than he does. So be careful when you're asking for a sexually disciplined man, you can't sexually manipulate him. Let me say that again. A sexually disciplined man, you cannot sexually manipulate him. So, uh, some women use that in their arsenal, not saying you do, I'm just giving you the full run around coaching here, right? Mentoring here that, um, women who use sexual manipulation, which I'm going to talk about later. So hold your horses. When they use sexual manipulation, you want a sexually disciplined guy so that you can turn him out. Nope. That won't work with this guy. A, a, a man who's truly sexually disciplined won't fall for that, ladies. So <laughs> you're really going to have to be about that life with him. That's why I said traditional men are the most difficult men to snag because what they tell you is how they really live. So if if you want a sexually disciplined man, make sure you're sexually disciplined. You can't be a, 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 a sex kitten <laughs> and, and, and want a sexually disciplined man. You have to be a sexually disciplined woman. So he needed a win. So he asked out a woman that he was sure to be accepted by. It's a nasty thing, but that's how it is in the sexual market. That's how it is. That's why I hate the sexual market. I hate it. You're liable to get treated any kind of way. <laughs> no matter how fantabulous you think you are in a sexual market, 
you can get treated any kind of way. There is no respect to persons. There is no pretty privilege in the, in the sexual market. Pretty privilege only gets you so far because there is someone out there that doesn't respect your pretty could care less about you being sexy, could care less about your status, your, your degrees, your financial success. They could care less about that. It's all about their libido. That's what it's about. So he's lukewarm, attracted to you, and that's why he falls back. The next one is a huge one. And I would say, in my professional opinion, this is probably the most, <clears throat> for men that are masters of the universe, blue chip type of men, this is the number one reason. Incompatibility. And a lot of women, you'll hear a lot of women on social media play this down, but I'm telling you that compatibility piece is huge, especially with men who are producers, international, global businessmen, men who come from the best families, excellent pedigree. Compatibility is huge. Ladies on my other platforms, hit the link at the top because you don't want to miss this part. And I'm going into that sexual manipulation. I'm going into a lot of stuff. You do not want to miss it. So hit the link at the top and come and join us now. Incompatibility. Here it is. Um, he's traditional and you give off signs that you're free spirit. It's not going to work. Not, 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 not going to work. Um, maybe he's a 50-50 guy. And you give off vibes that you're traditional. He may fall back. Will he, will he not try to sleep with you? <laughs> he's a 50, 50 guy. Like, you know, um, so you're traditional. He's still, which is why a lot of men spend a lot of time fussing at traditional women because traditional women are not giving up the cat cat like that. So they have to fuss at you and demean you and subjugate you with their words and make you feel bad because you said no. Those are 50-50 men. Traditional men do not beat up on women because they didn't give them sex. Let me say that again. Because, because 2024, I'm not going to hold my tongue anymore. 50-50 men are men that will drag you for not having sex with them. Traditional men actually admire that. I'm going to let that sit for a second. So if he's dragging you, if he's on a mic somewhere, dragging you for one, being traditional and two, saying no. And now I'm not saying you go out on a date. I'm not saying you playing games because we're going to talk about manipulation and games. I'm talking about this is just who you are. Or you've been through my good girl method and you know what you're doing. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about, you know, I'm not, I, I, it, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to women who have been through my good girl program. They know what they're doing. They know how to relate to a man. This is who they really are. Those women, if he's dragging you for filth because you won't have sex with him or because you're traditional, he's not traditional. Leave him where he is. Okay. Leave him where he is. He's telling on you. Traditional men, that that's a, a, a modest issue because traditional men are big on modesty. They're big on sexual discipline. Hello, what we just talked about. So when you say, I don't sleep around, I don't do that, I don't do A traditional man is like, okay, okay, I got a real one here. A 50-50 man is like, so you're traditional. What does that have to do with us laying together? He's telling you what that is. He's telling you he's not traditional. 50-50 men say they want to get they want you to give it up on a third date. I told you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. The majority of men out here are going to be dual income earning men. They that's the kind of relationship they want. Right? That's that's what they want. And it's not necessarily marriage. It could be girlfriend and boyfriend. A traditional man does not want a girlfriend boyfriend experience. He wants a wife. And so when you say you don't sleep around, this is, this is good. This is good. And you have to back that up. You have, like I said, if you want him to be sexually disciplined, you need to be sexually disciplined. And there will be people that will come to the mic and tell you, oh, you don't need to be sexually disciplined to get a blue chip guy. You're right. You don't. But to get a traditional blue chip guy, you do. To get a traditional masters of the universe. Oh, yes, you do, ma'am. That's a lie from the pits of hell telling you that you don't have to have sexual discipline for a traditional man. <laughs> he is not paying anyone's bills and retiring any woman who slept with the whole bar. He's not doing that. 
Every place he goes into, 10 people know you from back. Oh, that's my ex-boyfriend. Oh, I know so such and such. It, no, that doesn't appeal to him. He's talking about, you're talking about being the mother of his children. No. Incompatibility. Um, you're Christian. You're a good girl. And he loves to run the streets. I know this gets Christian girls, good girls all the time. We love the bad boy because we love the contrast. We love how we love how he puts us on a pedestal and says how one, oh, you're so different than those rats I used to run with. You're so different. You're such a good girl. Run. He is getting ready to drag you for filth. He is getting ready to bring you down. He's going to have you signing for stuff, sneaking stuff, lying, cheating. He's going to pull you into his world in his efforts to clean his own self up. He's trying to bathe himself socially and economically and all these other ways through you. And you're going to find yourself shedding yourself of the values that you hold dear in order to keep this man. Run for the hills. It's an incompatible, uh, incompatible thing going on. However, there are some men who are noble savages, as uh, my husband likes to say. They're noble savages who will say, you know what? You're a good girl. I'm not going to mess over you. And that's why he pulls back. Thank God for the guys that did that with me. I did meet a couple of noble savages and I was so attracted to them. OMG. And God <laughs> prevented that because that would have been a train wreck. Oh, yes. And you know what? They were better than me because they said, you know what, Nicole, I'm going to fall back. The one said he would fall back. The other one just did. He just didn't pick up the phone anymore. And I eventually caught the hint. I mean, I was young. You know, and but I just wasn't about that life. I just wasn't about that life, but I was so attracted to him. Those guys, the, those noble savages will let you know, look, they'll get ghost on you and be glad they did that, ladies. Don't chase them down and, oh, I want to get to know your world. Okay, you're giving him carte blanche to run amok in your life. So don't come running back complaining that guys do you wrong. Don't do that. Okay. Um, major deal breakers. There's major deal breakers between the two of you, right? It could be, it's just major deal breakers, just period. Any deal breaker, he'll find out through conversation that you have those things and he'll fall back, right? Um, you want marriage and he doesn't, or maybe, um, he wants marriage and you don't want marriage. That's a compatibility problem. And so guys are guys who don't have much time for a social life to begin with are not getting ready to convince a woman to see the world his way. You have to understand that. Poor men do that. Guys who are poor, who have a lot of time on their hands, you know, the proletariats of the world, they have time to go back and forth with a woman about how she sees the world and how she should see it his way. That's sort of like the manosphere. They spend a lot of time doing that. Manosphere is full of pros. They sit and talk about how women should see the world the way they do. High productive men like Jordan, Jordan Peterson and, and the like, men like that, they don't spend a lot of time arguing with women about how women see the world. They're, they're too busy producing and being thought leaders and being leaders in the community and society, right? So masters of the universe and blue chip type guys and men with those mindsets, by the way, don't spend time arguing with women about how women should see sex, how they should see marriage, how they should. See, it's just you, we, we're either on the same page or we're not. That's how they see it. And once they determine that you're not on the same page, he ghosts you. He either ghosts you or men are great at ghosting because they hate uncomfortable conversations and they don't want to be pulled back in by your emotions. Why don't you love me? Why don't you like me? He doesn't want to explain that he's not feeling you. He doesn't want to explain that he's not into witchcraft because he's Christian. He doesn't want to explain that. <laughs> he doesn't want to explain that, you know, you worship crystals and he's not into that. He doesn't want to explain he wants marriage and family. And you want to hang out at the club. He doesn't want to explain that to you. Right. Um, you're alpha. You like being in charge. You like being the queen bee. He doesn't want to have that uncomfortable conversation, that un uncomfortable exchange about why he doesn't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with his woman every single day of his life. He goes toe-to-toe -to -toe in business 
and his and business and 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 finance and making the world go round, making decisions every day. And the last place on earth he wants to go toe to toe with someone is in his home. He knows he can subjugate children because children are children. They are supposed to follow his lead. And if you are a follower of Christ or profess to be so, you know the Bible tells you to submit to him. So the last thing he wants to do is spend time convincing you why you should submit to him. This is why I love traditional men because it's already a given. He's the financial lead. So there's no, no tension there. And there's no, no strain there of understanding, right? Financial strain there of understanding. There's a natural submission, right? So those guys that are 50-50 that want submission, good luck with that. But if he's 50-50 and you're an alpha chick, even though he's 50-50, you're alpha and you still want to be in charge, he wants to be in charge too, even though you're 50-50. Hello, listening to me, ladies? Are you listening to me? Even though he's 50-50, he still wants to be the head because men thrive when they're in the driver's seat. They love to be in control. I didn't, I didn't make the rules. I'm just telling you what it is. In these 50-50 unions, you think because you outperform him, you out-earn him, and things like that, you think that he still doesn't, he's going to pass on that submission piece? <laughs> Have you heard these men talk? Yeah. Yeah. No, they still want submission from you, even though you make $20,000 more than him. It doesn't matter. You have two degrees more than him. None of that matters in his mind. He's the man. He should be the head. This is why I hate 50-50 unions. But, hey, shout out to those of you who have to do it. I'm just telling you what that is. So if you go into meeting a guy and you say, well, Miss Nicole, I can't do the traditional thing. I want to remain in the workforce after I get married. That's all well and good. But if you meet a 50-50 guy, he still wants submission. I don't know that many 50-50 men that want some, uh, that want, um, breadwinners that tell them what to do. They want submissive breadwinners. Let me say this again, because 2024, I'm not holding my tongue. A lot of 50, 50 men want submissive breadwinners. So you need to find out what kind of 50, 50 guy you have, if you're going to do that. But if he finds out you're an alpha chick and you cannot play second fiddle to him, you cannot be the co-pilot, you cannot be the coach, you have to be the general manager of the team, he's going to let you go, right? Career-driven. You're more career-driven than family-driven. That's um, going to be a problem because if, he's, if he wants a family and both of you all are career-driven, somebody has to be family-oriented. Someone has to see... Somebody needs to be at home when the children get there. Somebody needs to prioritize children. And for a lot of women, they want this, but they're not, they're more career driven than family driven. And if he's a blue chip type of masters of the universe type of guy, high powered, high driven, highly ambitious man, and he's global, he needs somebody that's homebound. He needs somebody that's home driven. That sees the importance of a home cooked meal. That sees the importance of picking the children up and being involved in PTA and being involved in parent teacher associations and all these, you know, um, going to the school board meetings and understanding what's going on and knowing what's going on in the neighborhood, in society, the homeowners association. He needs someone that's home driven family driven because he's focused on making the money. Does that make sense? Even if he's 50, 50, one of you all has to fall back a little bit for the family. And if 50, 50 relationships, it's this assumption, which is dangerous. It's an assumption that we both are on the same wavelength in terms of divvying up the family duties and so forth and so on. That's not a given. You have to talk that out. That's why I wrote my book. Get my book. It's unavailable on Amazon, Discovering Feminine Wife Styles. Some of you need to figure out, do you want to be a housewife? Because some of you are not cut out for this, okay? You're not built for this lifestyle. <laughs> and then some of you want to remain in the workforce. You're not sure. That's why I wrote the book to help you figure that out. And some of you are incompatible with him because of different backgrounds. Now, that's not a deal breaker. Here's the thing. I talk to women all the time that want certain type of men where they come from. 
You hate where they come from. You hate their family. You hate their family values. And I talked about this in the five types of home wreckers because there is a home wrecker that wants nothing to do with the family. She just wants resources you kind of come off like her, even though that's not how you are, you come off like that to him. Like, how can you not understand my family values, my family tradition, uphold my family values that we hold dear? That's, that's, you know what I mean? You're pushing the envelope a little bit, right? Unless you're like Harry, Prince Harry, and you take a chance by marrying a feminist, okay? That's going to clash like it did with his mother. That's going to clash with his family because they are heavily traditional, right? So that's going to clash. And you need a super, super liberal man that is super, super fluid and liberal to let you be like that. They are, there are men like that. Don't get me wrong, but it's very competitive to get those guys <laughs> because every woman wants a man that's kind of going to let her do what she wants. He's super liberal. He sees how letting you be this free spirit is great. Please understand, those guys typically aren't traditional, and you will be working with him. So, yeah. And um, <laughs> they are liberal, but they still want you to respect his family and traditions. If you get with a man and you don't respect his family, you don't respect his race, you don't respect his culture, you don't respect where he comes from, you're going to have a hard time making a romantic connection with this man. And he's just going to cut you off. It, look, the competition for him is stiff. So he's got to X you out real quick. And if you give signs that you're not cool with his upbringing, you're not, you're not cool with how he grew up, his pedigree, you have issues, he's associated with the ruling class, you don't like that, that's going to be a problem for you. And he sees that. And he's like, okay, I, I see – and. Please understand, these men have extensive dating experience and they can foresee problems down the road. So they're just going to let you go, right? Exes and miscellaneouses are always orbiting you. Ladies, you want to know why some guys stop chasing you? Because you're constantly talking about your exes. You're constantly talking about your children's father, your ex-husband, miscellaneous men, my friend, such and such and such. And these friends are male, and what a lot of women will tell you on social media, he's insecure if he can't deal with your friends. I call bull. I call bull. Because if the shoe is on the other foot and every time you turn around, he's talking about his ex-girlfriend, his ex-wife, his best friends that are female, you would have a hissy fit. You would be inboxing me. Mr. Cole, I need a one-on-one -on -one with you because the guy I love is constantly talking about his exes. I know you ladies and I know you would have a problem with it. Don't tell me you wouldn't. So when the shoe is on the other foot, hello. These men don't want you constantly talking about exes and men orbiting you. Because guess what? You're constantly talking about your children's father. You're constantly talking about your ex-husband, your ex-boyfriend from back in the day. You know what message that sends him, that you're not over him, that that's the standard that you set for all the men that come behind him, which is fine. It's just that he doesn't want to hear that. You're literally telling me, <laughs> you're laying in the bed telling me about an ex. Like, do you actually think that that's interesting? You're on a date with me. And you're literally talking to me about how wonderful your ex was or how horrible he was. That's equally just as bad, right? This just mums the word on exes unless he asks you and I can tell you what to say because you have to really say that in the right way <laughs> otherwise, right? Um, but that talking about exes and all of that kind of good stuff, that's problematic, and some guys just find it just easier to just fall back on you. Okay, she's got a lot of stuff going on. She's got all of these men around her. Let me just go on about my business because this is just too complicated. This can get complicated. Oh, she dated a man that was in jail? Oh, let me get out of here. Oh, she dated a man that sold drugs? Ooh, let me get out of here. Oh, you know, her father, her children's father is such and such. Or her father was like this, and so she's attracted to guys like that. Oh, let me get out of here. Um, I'm telling you, <laughs> talking about exes and miscellaneous men. Oh, my best friend, he does hair, and we spend a lot of time together. Well, you think that's harmless. Around us, 
is harmless to women because we understand. But to a man, he's always thinking that man has the same equipment I have. And I know how fine she is. And he might be saying he liked the same sex, but that doesn't mean he does. And she's around him an awful lot. I'm not going to test the streets, as my husband says. So he's just going to fall back on you. Now, other coaches will tell you, oh, he's just insecure, whatever. I'm not taking that chance on a blue chip guy. I Personally, I'm not. I'm, I, I wouldn't. You know how hard it is to meet a blue chip masters of the universe and you're sitting up there, oh, he's just insecure. He's just insecure. He's insecure because every time you turn around, you're talking about exes and every, every time you're out and about, you're seeing someone that you used to smash or, oh, I know him from school. I know him from here. I know him from, come on, ladies. Come on now. You do that with your girlfriends, not with a, a, a bow, <laughs> a suitor. Come on now. Well, remember when I talked about the bows and I talked about suitors, I talked about friends, I talked about the hierarchy. Let me see if I can find it. Remember I talked about the hierarchy of guys? And I said, let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it. There's the hierarchy. Remember I talked about this, ladies? There's your friends. There's your suitors. There's gentlemen. And then there are your bows. Right? I talked about these guys. The suitors are serious. Those are the ones that are courting you for something serious. They're taking you out to get to know you, to see if something is, can, 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 you know, something can come of it. Your friends are just your friends. They're platonic and that's it. These are not guys you used to smash. These are platonic friends. And then there's gentlemen. These are just men that are just nice to people, nice to you because that's just who he is. And then you have your bows. These are your guys that are orbiting you, but they don't really want anything romantic from you. They're just around you. They're attracted to you. They like you. They're in your sphere, but you don't, they're not, they're not, they haven't asked you out yet. So they're just kind of around, you know, they like you, you know, there's a mutual attraction, but they haven't asked you out. A suitor on the other hand has expressed interest in you and he likes you. That's why he's priority for women that want to get married. Now, women that don't want to get married, all of these guys equal the same, but to women who want to get married, suitors trump everybody. And you meet a guy that you consider a, a suitor and you want to put place a bow above him. You want to place a friend above him. Now, I'm not saying you have to dish your friends, cold dish your friends, but you do need to make a line of demarcation like, hey, he's platonic and that's that and leave it at that. Don't make this. Uh, we hang around each other all the time. He's constantly in my in my space. This is you, you kind of have to let him know this is platonic and that's that. Phrases that scare him off. Um, I did a whole complimentary guide on phrases that scare off traditional men. But let's be clear. There are phrases that women use. They have picked up on social media, on TikTok. God help you. 95% of the phrases that you all pick up on social media. I told you, 22 to 4, we're going in. 95% of the phrases that you all pick up on social media that you tell men actually turn them off. They, it does. It turned them all the way off, all the way off. All 95% of the stuff that you're told to tell me and say it this way, do it this way. You got to move this way, sit this way, go here, go there. 95% of that is incorrect. It's incorrect. And it, this is why, and you, and you know how I know I'm right. The marriage rate hasn't improved. Um, women are still single. More women are still single than ever before. The men are frustrated and the women are frustrated. You know why? Because women are trying these tactics, these little uh, cast a spell on him to do X, Y, and Z. <laughs> cast a spell. You have to cast a spell to meet a man? You have to cast a spell to get a man to like you? Girl? <laughs> She's telling you to cast a spell to get a man? You have to cast a spell to get a man to call you back? Oh, bless your little heart. <laughs> oh my god if y'all don't stop listening to that foolishness oh put your crystals here and burn your candles and your incense there to get him to call you back 
put a little this in his food and say a little that in this food. Yeah, Phidias, yeah, put a little this in here. You have to do all that. To... <laughs> I laugh at it. I'm like, y'all do all that to get a man? <laughs> you have to cast a spell to get a man to call you back? Are you serious? Are y'all that desperate? Come on, ladies, 2024, let's, no, no. You do not need to cast a whole spell to get a man to call you back. <laughs> oh, my Oh, MG. No, you do not need to do that, baby. And a lot of phrases that just, I'm manifesting my man. I'm telling you my truth. All of that foolishness scares the best men away. They're like, what? Oh, she's one of them. And that's coming up the pipe. I think I might do this next week. Archetypes of women that scare men away. It's sort of like the, the boxes men put you in. I might say that for my clients because that's that's that that content right there is gold. Uh, that's life-changing content. These are uh, boxes that men put women in. Like I told you, they don't test you. They read you. And if you come off as one of those, nope, I'm going to say that. Um, but phrases that a lot of women are, um, <laughs> a lot of phrases you all are using is absolutely, I know Phidias, I would do it. I would do it. I may do it in Patreon. Who knows? I don't know. I'm amping up my Patreon this year. Um, <laughs> oh, a lot of phrases you all are using don't work. It's, it's absolutely turning off the masses of the universe and the, um, uh, my divine feminine. Oh, that's another one. Phrases that need to be retired from 2023. Divine feminine. My boundaries. Um, what's another one? I'm manifesting. I'm healing. Uh, um, this kind of stuff needs to be retired. You're healing. You don't need to announce to the world that you're healing. We're going to talk about that tonight. I'm, I'm going to get in a Type some phrases in the chat that need to be resting in my feminine. OMG, that's a good one, girl. Resting, I'm resting in my femininity. I, it's about my lifestyle. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on. Like, I could be up here to 12 midnight going on. The soft life, that was okay. Um, it's just the motivations behind that phrase because everybody means something different from the soft life. Like those of us that are housewives, we live soft life by definition. So we don't need to say soft life. But when you live by I need the soft life and that's your mantra, then men are um it's your motivation behind it. So that one is kind of iffy. Self-care, uh, that was okay. Men don't care about self-care. It's when you self-care isn't selfish, when you have to, you know, it's leaning into, I have to say no all the time. It's, you, you, that one's, that one's okay to a point. But I could go on and on and on about phrases that turn off men. Uh, I'm telling you, just 95% of that stuff, just no. Can we just go back to being old school women that just talk? <laughs> And that's the danger of social media. You notice I never give you phrases to say. There's no divine feminine. We're not goddesses. God is God. Let me, ooh, I need to put that on a shirt. We are not goddesses. God is God. You cannot be a Christian witch. That scares men away. And I'm giving, me, giving that to you for free because I know most of you won't believe it. Most men are afraid of that. You're casting spells, but then in the next breath, you talk about Jesus. What are we doing here? What was okay? So you're confused. You got the spirit of confusion going on here. I'm out. Christian witchcraft. That's that's not that's in two different houses there. Night and day, evil and good. Um, no, 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 no. Goddess, we are not goddesses, ladies. We're not. God is God. There is one God. God the Father. <laughs> we are not goddesses. There is no divine feminine. We are not divine be beings. We're just feminine. Can we just be normal? We're just feminine. Anything extra added to it to add value to us. And I know what they're doing, and I don't think they're doing it in a malicious way, but they're trying to add value to us by assigning all of these sacred feminine and all of that. 
I know what they're trying to do, but we're valuable as women without doing all of that. I don't need to say I'm sacred feminine. I'm divine. No, I'm feminine. That's it. I'm not a goddess. I'm a good woman, period. I don't have to be a goddess. God is God. I follow him, right? <laughs> we're just women, okay? <laughs> and let me just leave that there. I'm going to do a whole stream about that because I know that's going to trigger a bunch of people. Uh, but lifestyles and beliefs, incompatibility, I, my lifestyle this and my lifestyle that. What you mean is quality of life, which men understand. But when women lean more into that, he's like, oh, so this is about a lifestyle? I'm out. This is about you having a certain quality of life that you want me to provide. So it's not about me. I'm out, right? Um, your quality of life requirements are unrealistic. It's kind of in the Lulu land. You want a half a million dollar house, which is nothing wrong with that. My dream house is upwards, close to a million. Hopefully my husband isn't listening. It's close to a million dollars. But so I'm, I'm not judging people for what they want. Please don't. Hey. What I'm saying is you got to come with half a million dollar contributions. What are you going to add to the family pot that make him so like you just want to be a trophy wife? Okay, well, what does trophy wife mean to you? Well, I get to be pretty and I'm the woman of the house. What does that mean, though? Right. That's another phrase that needs to be retired because quality men know what trophy wife really means. And I've been guilty of using that phrase because in my mind, I thought it was a beautiful woman who is a housewife who represents the type of woman that's married to a masters of the universe type of guy. But it was brought to my attention by a man that a trophy wife doesn't, they don't hear the same things that we mean. When we say trophy wife, we mean a pretty girl that gets the soft life given to her by her husband because they're well off and they live a good life and so forth and so on, which is nothing wrong with that. But me in here, oh, she, because she's pretty, I need to break my back working day and night and she just gets to lay up in the house and be pretty. And she is not responsible. There's no personal agency to do to show up as a good wife or anything like that. She's just pretty. That's it. She's just a trophy. Trophies sit on, on, on counters and gather dust. Again, men are logical. So if you're saying you want to be a trophy, so if you're saying you want to be a trophy, what you're in essence kind of communicating to a man is that you want to sit on a, um, a shelf and, and gather dust. That's not what traditional women do. And they're, they're not here for it. They're not here for that. Right. <laughs> right. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you can call yourself what you want. You can do what you want. I'm just saying for the masters of the universe, the blue chip type of guys, the high powered men, they listen to this stuff. They've heard you on social media. They've heard you in real life. And I'm telling you, a lot of these phrases turn them off. It just does. Um, saying things that come off as opportunistic is going to be a turnoff. They are going to downgrade you, meaning they're going to do, um, and I know what you do. You see women on social media. Oh, she calls herself this and she gets spoiled. I, in 2024, I want you to stop believing what you see on social media. Everything you see on social media is not true. You have peer, people on here saying that they're housewives and they work a whole, a whole nine to five, <laughs> a whole nine to five, but they'll tell you that you're their housewives. We ran into that on clubhouse women. Well, I'll, I'll, completely lie and have a full-time jobs talking about housewives. I'm telling you, you cannot believe everything you see on social media. You cannot. This is why I hold myself to a standard and produce women that get married because I want you to see my work in action. I want you to see my true, my tree bears fruit, right? I want you to see women's lives that have been touched by my work. So, um, Yes, you're going to see women call themselves everything and say everything and do everything. They're going to attack the church. You're going to attack everything. And, and you're going to say, oh, but she's still attracted to a rich man. It's, everything is not what it seems, baby. Everything is not what it seems. 
everything is not what it seems. Come on now. Come on now. I've told you about YouTubers and, and, and stuff that we know behind the scenes. When you get deep into YouTube, you learn things about other people and you're like, everything's not what it seems. I want you in, in year 2024 to kind of think for yourself and not take everything for what they say. Go. I don't want you to try to compare your life to mine because this is the life I chose. I want, I'm Naomi. I want to help you get the life for you. Naomi was a widow. Her husband died. Her sons died. And if we go by modern women's logic, she is the least likely person. And plus she was poor. She's the least likely person to give advice to anybody about how to get a man, especially a rich man, right? But she did mentor Ruth into the best life, which ultimately was the lineage of Jesus Christ. Hello, Naomi, meager Naomi. And I'm just telling you, it doesn't take all that. People don't need to lie to you. They just need to produce for you, right? You don't need to compare yourself to me and search for my wife, uh, search for my life and try to find a husband like mine. This is my husband. This is my man. Find the man that works for you. I will help you find the man for you. Ivana's husband that I help her get is completely different from Tony. But guess what? That's okay, though, that I helped her get her lane. The other lady that just got married last week, I helped her find the man that works for her, the lady that works in TV, the hotshot uh, exec that works in TV, that I helped her get a husband, that they're telling can't find a man to pay all her bills. I helped her get a husband. She didn't go, oh, I, I, want, a, I, I want a husband like you, or you can't help me because I, I no, she said, I want you to help me find this type of man. I want this type of man. And I helped her do it. Okay. That's what smart women do. I don't want you to compare your life. I don't want you to be like me. I want you to be like you. That my brand is not built on you being like me. My brand is built on you being you because that's better. Right. I'm the only person that can be Nicole Michelle. You're the only person that can be Ivana and Devin. You're the only person that can be RM. You're the only person that can be uh, uh, um, Zsa or Alexis. You're the only person. You're the best person to be Alexis Michelle. And I want you to be that, not Nicole. I don't want you to be like me. I want you to discover who you are and make that person the, the most awesome person you can be. Manipulation in games. This is another reason why men fall back. It's like, why is she, why is she, why is she playing? I called her. Three hours ago, and I know she's off work. Look, guys, when you give guys your schedule, they kind of know you and they settle into a routine. They know you or it's in the beginning and they know you're interested, but you're playing games, manipulation. They know a lot of women think that they're awesome at playing games. You're not really that good at playing games because if you were, they would work. Hello, ladies. Come on, let's get it right. This is January 2nd. Let's get it right. Women who play games and who are good at it win. Stop right there. Women who play games and are good at it, they win. Women who play games and are not good at it, they don't do too good. They don't do good. They don't do too good. You're not returning his phone calls. You have returned his text. It seems like you're playing games. He smells a rat. He smells like, I'm sorry, I have a little cold. I'm sorry, y'all. It, it sounds like you're playing games. It feels like, it sounds like. It walks like a duck and quacks like a duck. He's going to assume you're playing games. Remember, guys hate rejection and they hate feeling like a sucker. And if he starts to kind of feel that way, he's just going to pull back. He's like, I was really into her. Why is she playing games? He's just going to pull back. A lot of women kind of do this when they nerd hunt. And that's another thing that's, that's is obsolete as well. And I'm going to talk more about that in the upcoming streams. Nerd hunting is played out and, a lot of women are still on that. Let me find a socially awkward guy 
who, when I said go get a nerd, I was talking about marriage. I wasn't talking about fleecing him, finessing him. I was talking about going to get the guy and giving him a shot. He's in your inbox. He not He's not necessarily the most outgoing person, but give him a shot. I wasn't talking about fleecing him for money. But a lot of women take those guys to, I know I got to get, uh, get me some lemon, lemon honey. I know I need to do that as soon as this stream is over. Um, Tony isn't here yet. So my eyes are like so itching right now. I just want to scratch. <laughs> um, but a lot of guys are like, um, so she thinks I'm a nerd. They know that they're nerds and, and, and nerd in the traditional definition, not nerd because you play video games. That's stupid. Gen Z millennial definitions nerd by the traditional definition is a man who's studious. He reads books all the time. He's not necessarily outgoing. It's hard for him to connect to other people because he's super smart. That's a nerd. And a lot of guys know they're nerds. They know they're nerds and they know they're starting to pick up because social media, Thanks to the barbershop being digital, men are comparing their notes and they're like, hey, guys, you nerds out there. The women are choosing you because you're a nerd and they think that you're less um, not very socially, uh, socially inept. And uh, and they think that they can get over on you. There's less competition for you. So they're going to come for you and fleece you. They can't get to guys like me. They, you know, they can't get to the sexy, fine guys like me. They can't fleece me because I'm too good on my toes, right? So they're going to come target you. Ladies, those fellas know you're coming. They know that they're classified as nerds. They know this. You don't think nerds know they're nerds? And so when a super beautiful woman is like, oh, I'm a sapiosexual. I love a smart man. Whatever. He's like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I'm gonna treat you just like that pretty boy. I'm gonna tap that and I'm gonna leave you just like he did. See, uh, the nerds are getting game now. See, they're paying for these little uh, coaching sessions from these pretty boys, and these pretty boys are telling them, "Hey, I didn't have to pay for sex, <laughs> uh, and but she made you take her out on an expensive date. Ha! Jokes on you, nerd. Jokes on you, beta male. Ha 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 ha. The joke is on you." And so the guys are like, oh, oh, so the ladies are treating me like a sucker. So now, no matter how sweet you are, how pretty you are, how sexy you are, it's not working. The nerds are like, yeah, whatever. Hi, honey, what's your name? Mr. Mr. Red. Okay, Mr. Red. So you thought you were just going to be so sexy and sleek that he was just going to be, <laughs> my name is James. <laughs> my name is James. <laughs> no, he's like Mr. Red. That energy is completely changed, baby. Ladies, these guys are not as weak as you think they are. Those, those days where those guys were in abundance of geeky, nerdy guys were in abundance. Those days are over. Those days are over. Now you might find a, a few every now and then because you're his dream girl. But even then, they're getting sassy about it. They're like, oh, she thinks she's getting a relationship from me. I know what she's doing. I know she's finessing me. She's not going to get over on me. That's why so many women are frustrated. Because back in my day, when back in the 90s, shut up. I'm old. I know that. Back in the 90s, you could do that. You can run around with the pretty boys and then come back to the socially awkward guy and play it off and marry and walk off in the sunset. The guys aren't doing that anymore. They're, first of all, they don't even have one to date. And then they find out that you just want him because you want his resources because you think you don't have to compete heavy for him. You think you're so sexy and fine that you won't have to compete for him. He's a low-key masters of the universe, but he's nerdy, which means all the other women haven't figured him out yet. So let me slide under the radar, get him. No, baby. No, they see you coming, and that's why you're not having success, because they know what you're doing. I told you 95% of the stuff you're learning on social media is crap. I told you that. These guys are not as stupid as you think they are. This isn't the first time they've heard this. I'm not saying this to announce it. You know where I got this from? Them. <laughs> they are saying they know about it. 
They are saying they know about all these channels teaching you how to finesse us. They know that. They know. You think because they're not doing videos about them, they want you. Can I help you understand something, ladies? They want you to believe that they don't know. Hello? Let me say it again. They want you to believe that they don't know that you're finessing them. They want you to believe that you are actually getting over on them. They want you to try because they're attracted to you anyway. So if organically he walked up to you on the street, you would go, Ugh, I'm not attracted to you, right? And they know you're switching that around because you want to go into an untapped market. So they're like, oh, so she's going to come to me because she thinks I'm a dumb, rich nerd. Cool. Let her do that. That's why they don't do streams on women that teach you how to finesse. You don't think they know about those channels? You don't think they know? They know. They want you to try that crap on them. They want you to give it up thinking that you won. Oh, I've seduced this fool. Huh? And then the joke is on you because uh, you don't get that call back like you thought. And then you find that, wait, is he running game on me? Not this nerdy dude with the Coke bottle glasses. Not him playing. I'm fine. I'm a nine or a 10. I'm beautiful. Yeah, you're a nine or a 10 that got played by a guy who's probably a three or four. <laughs> yes, you did, ma'am. They want you to try that crap. That's why they don't put that stuff on blast. They do not attack those channels. They don't even mention those channels because they want you to go over there in droves. They want you to try that stuff out because they know you're going to come over there and they know they're going to get laid because you think that they have something. You're welcome. Seems like you're playing games to him. He's out. If you come off too sexual to him, he knows something's up, especially if he's a nerd, especially if he's a nerd and you come off, hey, hey, what's up, baby? Oh, I love a man that likes to read. Yeah, whatever. You watch TV 24 hours a day and <laughs> you're telling him these guys are not stupid. I'm telling you, these, especially if he's a masters of the universe, blue chip type guy, high powered. He's around women who are so thorough. And ladies, whatever you say in the chat is here. Um, I get rid of the chat after our lives. What's said in the chat stays in the chat forever. Um, <laughs> he's international. These men are not passport bros. They travel for business. They go to acquire business. That going over for sex tourism is, is child's play. Right, they go over there and for business. Okay, they're going over there buying hotels and having business meetings in London and Brussels and Moscow, Paris. Right, those guys exist. By the way, they're going to Abu Dhabi as a, a, a what you call contractors, government contractors, and stuff like that. You really think you're gonna run game with this little stupid American stuff you see on uh, TikTok? Girl, <laughs> now I see why you all need spells. Okay, you don't seem interested enough for him. You don't seem interested enough. A lot of women give off this energy, and hopefully this is not you. They give off this energy that he's in he's she's entitled to his attention. When you give off that energy, he's like, oh, I feel suckerish right here. I feel like a sucker. Every time I call her, it's, it's sort of like I'm trying to win her over. And let's be clear, ladies, men don't mind pursuing you, but you kind of need to show that you're interested in him, not in a desperate way, but in a more balanced way. You need to show that you're interested. And a lot of women try to, again, picking up stuff that they heard on social media and TikTok. Bless your heart. You go in there trying to play hard to get. You don't have to do that with a guy that likes you. Well, how do I know he likes me, Mr. Cole? Because he's calling you and he's texting you and he's consistent. That's how you know. You, you can only go by his behavior, his consistency. And he's showing interest and you're playing games. That's overkill. 
Okay, that's overkill. Okay. Uh, your phone calls aren't engaging enough. You just sit on the phone. He has to do all the work. I'm going to tell you right now, you have to hone in on your conversation skills. Right? Absolutely. You cannot fake interest. You have to hone in on your conversation skills. I mastered conversation skills with any kind of man years ago. And those of you who were raised with your father in the home, you tend to be a little bit more advanced because you don't have a fear of that connection with a man. Like if you had a healthy relationship with your father growing up, you do not have a fear of connecting with men like a lot of women will have. And I'm going to talk more about this in the end. So we, we hone in on conversation. If conversation is a, a weak part for you, you need to fix that. You cannot hold a Masters of the Universe conversation, a blue chip type of fella conversation. Nope, can't do it. A lot of guys who don't make a whole lot of money are great conversationalists. They'll still dump you because you're a horrible conversationalist. You don't seem interested. You don't seem interested. It seems like you are, oh, it's like pulling teeth to talk to you. And a lot of times it's because of those exes and guys that are orbiting you. It's this guy that you like. He never really gave you much attention and he's still orbiting you. But you got this other guy that's calling you and expressing interest. And you're just giving him lukewarm interest. And the guy that's not paying you any attention, you give him 100% of your attention. Guys picking up on that. Guys pick up on that energy all the time. And those ladies end up staying single because what they do is the guy that's curving them isn't choosing them, but that you can't tell them in their mind, he is choosing them because he calls me once in a while versus the guy that calls them every day. She doesn't show him interest. I know it's backwards. And those women tend to stay single because they will put all of their energy and they don't show interest. In the guy that's actually showing them interest, right? Boring connections, boring, 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 boring. You don't have anything to talk about. You're boring. Your life is boring. All you do is talk about church. That's going to be a problem. I was a church girl, but I knew what was going on. I could have a conversation about politics. I could have a conversation about what was going on other than the church. Now, if you're dating another church guy, you still need to know other stuff besides church. If you're a party girl, you that's all you know how to talk about is the parties. Who did how many lines at the party? That's all you know about. Who got sick and drunk at the party? That's all you know about. <laughs> the best place to go get party clothes. The best rap music. That's all you know about. You don't know anything? Boring. Boring, boring, boring. I'm going to tell you that. She says, what is the definition of man chasing? I'm going to tell you in just one second. Um, not texting him back, coming off too sexual. But yeah, dates are boring. Your dates are boring. You feel like you're entitled to him treating you a certain way. You feel like you deserve to be treated a certain way. And you come off in this energy. And I'm going to tell you something, ladies. A lot of women have regular looks, regular girl next door looks, but they have this energy like they're nines or tens and guys don't mind treating you well. Here's the thing. They don't mind treating you well, but you come off like a snooty nine or 10, not a humble, beautiful woman. You come off like a snooty nine or 10, but you really are a four or five. And so that's when men start going, wait. She must not really like me that much because if she did, she would just be herself and she would just be humble. This is way too much work. She needs to figure it out. I'm, I'm out of here. When you start to be too much work, men leave. You start talking about racism too much. You start talking about money too much. You start talking about uh, trauma too much. You got it's too many issues going on in your life. Too much, too much, too much. He's out. He's out. This is too much work. Men don't like work. They they don't mind chasing you. But when chasing becomes work, it's, oh, okay. And it's work when he's chasing you and you act lukewarm. Oh, wait, I'm chasing her and I fall on deaf ears. I'm chasing her, but she doesn't pick up the phone when I call. Your dates are boring. If you're out of his lane, 
and you play hard to get, it, it, it's kind of like he sobers up. He's less likely um, going to take a hint. If he's out of his lane, if he's punching up, like he's, let's say, for instance, he's not the hottest guy in the room, and you are hot, you are smoking, and he knows you're out of his lane, he knows this. But when you don't act interested in him, he's like, oh, okay, I know what this is. She's nerd honey, or she's ugly guy hunting, or she's not really into me. She's just trying to see what she can zap from me. Hello, exposure. Okay, that's what happens. And he falls back from you. Okay. You act too interested in him. You act too interested in him. You wanted to know what chasing is. When you're mentally and emotionally chasing the man. And this is because you're too interested in him before you even get to know him. Men know they have to get work. They have to do put in work, put in emotional work, put in invest in time and energy and emotions in gaining your trust and your loyalty. They know that. So when you don't require that, you don't have to scream boundaries and boundaries and boundaries. When you require that just by your energy and your aura and the way you carry yourself, he know, oh, this is a real one. I need to come with it. I can't play around with this one. This is a real one right here. <clears throat> he knows that when he meets a woman. He also knows when he meets a woman who's way too interested in him. You know why? Because she lets all of that go. Everything she's been taught is gone. No boundaries, no limits. I hate that word boundaries. No limits. Um, no standards. Just just freestyle, just free for all. And he's like, wait, she barely knows me. And she's already <laughs> giving herself my last name. He starts to feel weird. And that makes him want to push back. Like, oh, let me get away from her. She's in love with me already? Yeah. The only time this works, and it really doesn't work in this particular instance, but you can kind of get away with it, is if you're his dream girl. If you're the girl, he's like, oh, my God. When God made a woman... He made you. You have to be her. And most women are not her. So if you're not her, then you won't get away with that. He's going to feel weird. Ooh, she's in love with me already. I barely took her out. I just took her out for a hot dog and some ice cream. And she's in love with me like I proposed marriage. What is wrong with this chick? He's out. It's, this is too much work. It's something wrong with her. It's something wrong with her that she's bonding to a man she barely knows. There's something wrong with that. They smell a rat. Um, the attraction level decreases for women who are too interested too soon. He's going to lose interest in you if you're attracted in attracted to him too soon. You're emo It's what I call emotional chasing. You wanted to know what is chasing a man look like. You're emotionally chasing him. You're more into him than he's into you. You're emotionally chasing him. It needs to be even. The interest level needs to be even with, a, with him liking you just a little bit more. And the reason why I say that is because he's got to pursue you. He's got to show interest in you. And then you return it. It's like, a, it's like a dance, right? And when a woman leads, she ends up leading everywhere else. And that's a disaster. Unless you are a couple that can actually manage that. And most couples can't. And we see that because of the divorce rate. So if you plan to be the leader of the relationship, go ahead and chase him and lead from behind, lead from the bottom. But women who are feminine and especially for traditional, you're not going to lead him. You're going to let him lead, which is why he needs to be a little bit more into you than you or him, because he needs to see the value in you, which means you need to display the value in yourself so that he can like you, so that he can rationalize in his, man, in his mind why he can chase you over chasing other women. Does that make sense? Thank you, Phineas. I appreciate that. Funding the Scary Woman podcast in advance. Peace. <laughs> I'm going to do that podcast, but man, that's one that might, that might have to be a Patreon only because I know, I know people will hate my guts after that one. <laughs> because a lot of people, uh, a lot of, a lot of archetypes are going to be on that list that you wouldn't think that turn men off and baby. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, uh, man, I really want to do that next week, but no, I'm not trying to snatch edges this early in the year. Man, but man, that might be a Patreon only conversation. Um, you drop everything when he calls. Oh, yeah, I was going to meet with my mother and help her up the stairs with her groceries. But hey, I can cancel that to come go out on a date with you. Uh, he's like, oh, no, go ahead and help your mom. No, 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 no. Um, that's emotionally chasing him. That's a turn off, you know, stuff like that. Oh, I was going to go help my handicapped sister and give her a ride to the doctor, but Hey, I can cancel that to go out on a date with you. What? Oh, you know, I was going out with my best friend. It's her 40th birthday and it's a milestone for her because she's a cancer survivor. But Hey, I can cancel that to go out on a date with you. He's like, you ought to see his face. It's like his eyes are crunched up. He's like, what? No, go ahead. Go out with your friends. No, 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 no. She'll understand. Let me call her back real quick. I'll call you right back. I'm gonna cancel. You don't even call the free. You text her. Can't go because you could because this guy called. He's like, ew, ew, yuck, right? You don't seem to be desired by other men. You're like, nope, 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 nope. I'm totally free. I'm totally free. Wouldn't Mr. Cole, you said not to mention our exes and boyfriends. Two things can be right at the same time. You don't have to go in uh, with all the information about your exes and all of that and still be desirable. You know why he know you know how he knows you're desirable because of how you carry yourself. Men know when they meet a treasure. That's why the um that's why the Bible says who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. How many of you have seen a ruby in real life? Not a manufactured one. How many of you have seen a real ruby? Most jewelry stores don't carry them. You have to go to the more higher end jewelry stores. Harrods, Tiffany's. You have to go to the more higher end jewelry stores to see a genuine ruby. That's how rare they are. And they cost a mint. That's how rare a virtuous woman is. So you don't have to convince him that that's who you are because you live it. I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to let you all think about that for a second. I don't need to go around naming myself a goddess. I don't need to go around saying how good girl I am. I don't need to say that. I just need to be that. I don't need to say, uh, spit out my boundaries every five minutes and what I'm not going to take. And I'm not, no, I just live it. Like, hey, you know, I'm uncomfortable with what you said and what you're doing. I, I'm not sure if there's a misunderstanding, but I, I, that's not going to work for me. Trust me, if he's into you, he's fixing it and quickly. If he's not into you, he's going to argue with you. He's going to stop calling you. He's going to try to talk you off that ledge. He's going to uh, talk you back. He's going to get you into a logical debate. You know, uh-uh, <laughs> no. He's going to respect your boundaries. And that's not something you need to preach every time he sees you or every time he talks to you is my boundaries, my boundaries. my No, just have them and express them. That's a boundary for me. Uh, that's pushing me past my limits. It's making me uncomfortable. Are you open to talking about that so that we, you know, establish fairness in this connection? Because I really like you and I, I don't want us to stop talking because of a miscommunication. That's how you smooth that over. It's not, these are my boundaries, my boundaries. If you need to scream that that much, therapy might be in order. Healthy women don't need to scream about boundaries every five minutes. We just have them. Okay. With love. I'm telling you with love. 2024. Look, time is on my, on my side. And I've, I've told you all this stuff that, um, look, <laughs> We got to be real with ourselves. And a lot of things that we're saying to men is like freaking them out. Okay. Desperate energy, desperate energy, high sprung, clingy, needy. You all get it. You get the picture. Argumentative energy. Oh, it's such a lovely day out here. Well, it's not really lovely. I mean, it's about to, it's going to snow later. Okay. Really? Huh. Arguing with the wait staff, arguing with people online, argue, just argue, 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 argue. It's one thing you're in a, 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 a controlled environment where 
like a panel or something like that, that's acceptable to a point. But just argumentative in a one-on-one scenario with men is weird. It's constantly, you're constantly arguing, going back and forth, toe-to-toe. I mean, a man that you're supposed to like. I'm not talking about men you don't like online. That's different. Those those clowns, ugh. I'm talking about men you actually like. You actually like the fella, and you argue with him all the time. Why are you doing that? There's something going on there, ladies, that we need to acknowledge, okay? Conversation isn't friendly with you, right? Conversation, I've heard some celebrities, when they talk, Last year, we had a celebrity, I guess she's a a celebrity, say that she didn't want to date bus drivers. But I've seen her have other conversations. and It's like the energy level needs to come down just a little bit to make it just a little bit softer because the looks are in your corner. Success is in your corner. You know, beauty beauty is in your corner. Just take it down a peg or two. Just kind of lower that energy just a little bit more, baby. Just or just that voice needs a little bit. The delivery just needs to be just a little bit softer. We should sound good to men, not harsh. Talking to men like this, I don't know, uh, barking. Uh uh-uh. uh, your voice should sound like melted butter. I don't know how melted butter sounds, but you get my point. <laughs> You should sound good to a man. Your voice should be good. There are some women that are blessed with beautiful voices that are just relaxing. That's how your voice needs to be. Work at it. Work, 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 work. Men love women with sexy voices. You all know how to have sex, uh, phone sex. I know you do. What do you have on? I have on a t-shirt and just my panties Uh, and my nipples are hard. Y'all know how to have phone sex. That same energy you needs to go. I'm not saying going around having phone sex and day-to-day conversation, but you know what I mean? The same energy, y'all. Come on now, work with me. The same energy you have for phone sex. Hello, how are you? Oh, it's been a lovely day. I've been looking for your phone call. Your voice is just, oh, your voice is just so, ooh, it's so masculine. What man isn't going to pay top dollar to go to dinner with you? Woo! Look, he's like, woo. If you have a, mel- a velvety voice, guys get aroused by listening to you talk. You're welcome. If guys listen to you and they hurry you off the phone, you have work to do, okay? <laughs> the girl six, girl see that old movie, girl six. Yeah, <laughs> I might put that in the uh, the app for the ladies to watch. Girl six, you need that voice. Hi, how are you? Well, I've missed you. It's been a long time. Married women, you definitely have to turn that on. You have to purr. Right? You have to purr like, hi, baby. How are you? Oh, I was just thinking about you. I can't wait till you get home. And greet him at the door with something sexy. Oh, my God. What home wrecker? What home wrecker are you talking about? She doesn't exist. Right? You have to stop these whores in their tracks. You have to be your husband's goody girl. Everything. His nasty girl. All of that. You haven't had phone sex with your husband. You're missing out, y'all. Phone sex with your husband while he's at work. You're welcome. But the point I'm trying to make is, <laughs> ah, the point, there is no room for homemaker, homewreckers here, baby. I got it covered. I'm his slut. Got that? <laughs> you cannot out-slut a wife. Wives should be the sluttiest women for their, for their husbands. Slut, 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 slut. Right? There's nothing she can do that your wife can't do. That's why my Luring Wives course is going to be good. Do you understand what I'm saying, ladies? That voice needs to be good. Barking at men. Okay, she's too much work. I'm out. Right? Too busy, over um, oversetting boundaries and things like that. 
and not establishing a connection. You're too worried about him taking advantage of you and not about establishing a connection. And yes, you should be concerned about him being a creepo or a, a creep, or, you know, a, a vermin that's taking advantage of you. I get that. That, ne that means you need to uh, hone in on your vetting skills and you also need therapy because you shouldn't be afraid of men. If that's a problem for you and that's triggering you to work on the connection with men, that's going to be a problem. That's not his problem to work out with you in the dating scene to work that out with you. That's not his responsibility to work out your emotional issues. Every adult needs to come to the connection healed. Or working on that. Does that make sense? Too many vices. You got too many vices. Drugs. Cocaine. Smoking. You're stripping. Dancing. Party girl. Drinking. It's, it's too much. It's too much going on there. Right? It's too much. You're lying on your taxes. You're cursing. Like, it's, it's, just, it's just too much. It's just too much too much your vices are too much for him and last but not least and this is a bonus and then i'm gonna open up the floor for those that want to ask questions you you don't have to come on um on the screen with me at all I'm not gonna put that pressure on you so you can just type your question and then i'll i'll go go at it here's a bonus male hating energy and a lot of women online the advice they give you I can tell they don't like men. Let me blow my nose on that one. Does that make sense, ladies? A lot of people, when they give advice, they mean well. They mean well. They're coming from a good place when they, when they tell you things. They're not trying to hurt you. But they are hurt. There's things that have happened to them in the past that have hurt them. So their advice is coming from a hurt place. Now, they'll tell you that they're healed. <coughs> Excuse me. And their advice is healthy. It's not healthy. Because women who are healthy, they hear the pain. And they hear the advice is unhealthy. It's coming from an unhealthy place. Does that make sense, ladies? Let me make it sense. Let me make it make sense. Male hating energy is get his money. There's no, there's no um, talk. And, and next week, I think I'm going to do the, um, I think instead, because I have that queued up, how to love, how to really love a man. Nobody talks about that. It's all about how to find a provider and a protector. It's never about how to love him. And watch people switch up after this. But anyway, how to love a man. How to really, really get him. You know what makes a man put a ring on one woman and not the other? It's the woman that seems to get him. It, he could care less about love. I love you. Yeah, okay. No, he's going to marry the woman that gets him. She gets him. That's the woman that gets the ring. She gets me. Okay? That's the woman that get. Do you know how many women Tony been through? I got him. I, I, I get it. I get it. This is how you are. Okay, I get it. And I was okay with that. I loved it. That worked with, for me. When you get a man, not you just saying that just to get him. He cause because he can tell. He can tell. And the wives in the room, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You get your husband. And some people are like, really? You want to marry? Yeah, I want to marry him. I get him and he gets me. We get each other. That is the best union in the world. When you get each other, whoo. It's nothing like that connection. A lot of women can't get to that point because they have an underlying dislike of men. It comes off what he can do for me, what kind of life he can give me, what has he, uh, uh, what has he exceeded, um, succeeded at in life. It's all about what he can do. 
his posture, what he's offering. That's problematic because men want love more than we do. We get love from our best friends. We get love from our mamas. We get love from our sisters, our homegirls, our sorority sisters, the the, the charity committee, <laughs> the girls at church. We get love from everywhere because women by nature were loving creatures, were nurturing, nurturing creatures. We could dislike a woman and she starts crying and we go, oh, oh, send some love to Missy. Send some love. Everybody send some hearts to, and, and we could have just got through fussing. That's women. We're nurturing creatures. We're biologically wired to nurture because we're mothers, right? Life begins in our womb. So of course we, somebody needs to be loving, right? Men need that. Men don't get that. Men are coming to the world rolling. They come into the world fumbling and bumbling. And then if their life isn't good, if their mom and daddy situation isn't good, and he's a man, it's rough. Then you try to find some connection with a woman, it's rough for a man. Then you have to go out in the world and make your space in the world. Well, first of all, let's talk about education. Education for boys is rough. As girls, we don't even think about it. We can sit in a chair all day and color our little flowers and color and pass notes about who we like all day long. Girls, we can do this. This is why we make great secretaries because we can sit for hours at a time. Men cannot. Little boys, have you paid attention? Well, I had a, I had a son. But for those of you who paid attention to little boys, they like to jump. My son jumped off of couches. He jumped off of benches. He, ju he was always jumping off of stuff. I'm like, oh my God, he's going to fall and break his skull. He's always jumping off. Son, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> of course he loved football. He of course guys love contact sports. Duh, they love wrestling, football, basketball, all that stuff, right? They love that kind of stuff. And you know what school does? They suppress that naturally in guys. I'm just going to deviate just a little bit here so that you understand men. Women don't take the time to understand men, but you want what they give you. And I'm saying, you don't need to cast spells. You don't need to lie. You don't need to manipulate. You don't need to sexually manipulate men when you understand them. When you understand men, oh my God, they're like, please take my money. Please. Oh my God. What can I buy you? What? Shoes? That's all you want? You don't want the dress too? You don't want the handbag to go with it? Where can I take you? What's your dream spot? I'm telling you, most women can't do it because of pain. I'm going to come back to that. But when you have a general dislike of men, you can't go this deep. But if you look at little boys, they're constantly, they want to build things. They want to work with their hands. They want to jump off things. They're active. They want to run and play. Who are the most active kids at recess? The boys. The girls, you know what we do, did? We stood around. We might have played catch or something, but we stood around giggling and stuff like that, right? But it was the boys who were like, yes, recess. They needed recess more than the girls, right? And then we suppress that in our boys and make them sit for hours at a time. And then when they become men, by the time they reach high school, if their educational system is less than, they're gonna have problems. And this is with the best educational systems. College is just, uh. And then they go to college and learn that they're horrible people because they're men. They go to the, get these liberal arts discussions. Uh, I'm sorry, liberal arts uh, degrees from these colleges where these, these feminist professors are preaching to them about them being horrible creatures because they're men. And because they're men, they are biologically wired to be violent against women and so forth. Who wants to sit? No, who wants to pay an institution to tell them that they're horrible humans? And that's why men don't go to colleges so they can have some feminist professor telling him that he's less than because he's a man. Hello, I'm sensitive to this because I have a son. You, do you understand what I'm saying, ladies? So by the time they get to college, they're checked out if they go to college. So most guys that are um, just most guys are going to either make a lot of money working with their head. They're going to make they're living, working with their hands, producing, 
physically producing. And so those women that understand and that are attracted to blue collar women, I'm a blue collar man. God bless you. Because if you can find that blue collar man, man, he will work 15 hours a day for you. Oh, he has to be a suit and tie brother. Okay. He has to be a suit and tie man. Okay. No problem. But the women that love blue collar men, I'm not saying get with broke men. If you equate blue collar to broke, that's you. You don't understand economics and you don't understand the workforce. You don't understand the labor force. You don't understand how skilled, how skilled a lot of blue collar men are. It takes skill to be HVAC. It takes skill to <laughs> fix plumbing and fix... Uh, <laughs> You just don't know what you're talking about, okay? So those women that are open to blue-collar men, you you know, man, you come, he comes home and his house is clean and he's loving, and all you do is rub his back and his neck and his, and he's like, oh, because most women don't respect him. They don't. They don't. They don't care. They're like, oh, ugh, you're a construction worker. Oh, uh. okay, yeah, right. A lot of women have that energy and they're like, uh. You get him and you understand because he, because of what he does, he's a man. He likes doing that. He doesn't want to. Do you understand? A lot of men are not going to be suit and tie men. A lot of men are biologically wired to be out in nature. They're, um, they're biologically wired to, um, they are better to work in, um, the elements better than women. They are better to climb up these uh, skyscrapers and, and lay cement and all of that kind of stuff. Go down deep under the earth and, and well and, and mine and all of that stuff. Way better than women. And we, we don't appreciate men for those roles that they play. How they risk their lives to carry out some of the things that we need. Wi-Fi. Who do you think is down there laying that wire? Laying those pipes for that wire? Who do you think is laying those steel pipes for water to go from one city to the next? Who do you think is doing that? You think women are carrying those pipes? Please. Men are biologically wired to do that, and they're okay with doing it. They just want appreciation. That's it. Women who, um, women who hate men can't appreciate nothing a man does. Even when he does it for her, he can't, she can't appreciate it. Everything will be about her because she's in a deficit. She's in a deficit from daddy, father and daddy scars. I love you ladies, but a lot of stuff that you hear is coming from people with father and daughter scars. They need therapy more than you need it. And the reason why they can't teach you how to appreciate a man is because they can't give you what's not in them. You have to have a natural appreciation for men to teach women how to love a man. I'm not talking about love him because of what he does. Love him because of who he is. That's hard. That's hard. That takes a different understanding. And it's typically from women who were raised with a father that showed up every day. They can teach that lesson. And not because they're superior, because they have the frame of reference. They saw daddy come home and take off his clothes after working a long day, making sacrifices, working overtime to make sure family had a decent Christmas, working overtime to make sure the family could go on vacation, working and doing everything. Oh, you need extra money for your prom dress? No problem. Daddy got it. They, they were raised with that situation. And because a lot of women didn't have that situation, their coaching will come from a place of lack He's got to have this. He's got to have that. Don't get with him unless he does this, that, 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 that. They're barking what a man, a man needs to do versus loving him for who he is. Totally different energy. And I guess who's going to be more successful? The women who understand him. He, she gets me. If you ever talk to a man who's truly in love, you know what he's going to say? She gets me. If your man has never said that about you, you got work to do. She gets me. When he says you get me, oh, you're getting the ring. It's coming. I just told you, you're getting it. When he says you get me, you just get me. You understand me. Oh, a ring is coming. It's coming. Give it some time. A ring is coming. Because men don't let women go that get them. 
because most women don't. Most women are out for self. What can I get from him? And that's driven from father-daughter scars. Either daddy let him down or he wasn't around. And so her frame of reference when it comes to men is always going to be from what can he do for me? Because that father wound is open, is gaping, is needy. It's, it's, it's something that's there that hasn't been, it's a void that hasn't been filled. That's what I'm looking for. It's a void that hasn't been filled. So she's teaching you to approach a man from a void mentality. When you approach a man like, I know he understands value because he's going to take me out. And he's going to treat me nice. That's a totally different energy from he better take me out. He better understand my batteries. He better do this. He better do that. Otherwise, I'm a, I'm a dump him. He better be glad I'm going out on a date with him. Oh, I'm a little bit hungry. Let me just call him. Now, nah, I'm not really feeling him, but I just go out. He, I know he'll take me out on a nice date. I know I'm not really into him, but I'm still going to go. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't really date guys like him, but hey, I'm bored, so let me go. Who does that? If a guy did that to you, you'd be screaming and hollering. He just went out on a date because my booty was big. Well, yeah. Hello. So why would you do it to men? See, when people with good character don't do things because other people do them. They have a level of integrity that surpasses all human understanding. I don't. Being a doormat is accepting behavior. You don't have to be a doormat to be a good person. A good person says with integrity, because a good person, I believe, is one with integrity. It's saying just because I can be grimy doesn't mean I have to be grimy. And that's the difference between women and my in, in my area, the women that I talk to versus out in the world. That's why our numbers will always be small. More than likely, people will kind of hate listen to us. But for the most, I teach you all to be good women with integrity. You could be grimy. I could teach you how to be grimy. I'm a woman. We naturally know how to be grimy. Come on now. We're the descendants of Eve. We know how to be grimy. Okay? <laughs> we know, I could teach you. Every woman can start a coaching business teaching women how to be grimy. That's easy. Can you teach women how to tap into their goodness, their integrity? That is hard because that goes against what everybody is teaching right now. Everybody's teaching, get over, get over, get over, get over on him. Tell him this, tell him that, get over, get over, get over. It's hard. It's hard. That's why a lot of people will come for us as if we're the problem. No, they're coming for us as we're the problem because they really don't want to go for the problem people because they want the, the, the bad women who listen to those people to actually take those take that advice and go try it on them so that they can justify why they sleep with a woman and leave her, why they can date a woman forever and not be with her. You, you understand what I mean? That father and daughter scars can keep you from a world of happiness. It will keep you from experiencing true vulnerability in the arms and the chest of a man that loves you. Have you ever put your head on the chest of a man and heard his heartbeat? As you cry and sob into his chest and he holds you. If you haven't felt that, baby, you ain't lived. And you won't feel it as long as you hate men. Because they will never be vulnerable with you enough to give you that. They'll purposely hold that back from you. Because they're like, I'm not going to give her what she wants because she won't give me what I want. And they don't even know what they want. They don't. They don't know what they want until they have a meet, a, they meet a woman like you who knows he wants to be understood. He wants to be loved for him. I just told you next week's lesson. Um, Any questions? That's pretty much it, baby. That's pretty much it. Mrs. Nicole, apparently the gals are out here begging for $20, $40 in boxes of pizza. Listen, the ladies over here don't have to beg, baby. We don't have to beg for nothing. The men just do it. When you're a woman of good, uh, high integrity, you don't have to beg. You don't have to. Have I ever done a stream about men taking women? to coffee dates have i ever done have i ever wasted your time talking about that crap i probably mentioned it or mentioned it in passing 
I'm not going to do a whole stream about men taking us on coffee dates. And if you're my client, I told you the, 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 the science behind that. But why would I waste your time with that foolishness? When you are a woman of integrity, men are going to put their best foot forward all the time. When women harp about what kind of dates they're being taken on, what they're doing is revealing that men don't really value them like that. Not really. Men know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> when they take you to coffee date, when they meet you in Starbucks because you've been hanging out to meet men, they know what they know. Come on. They know exactly what they're doing. They want you to think that they don't know. Aha, you think men are stupid? They're logical. We're the emotional ones. They're logical. You don't think he knows that you're listening to finessers because they listen to those phrases. You don't think, why do you think those videos get so many views? You think that's just women? Come on now. It's 2024. Come on now. Surely you know that. The men are listening. They want to know what you're being told. And so they're kind of, they'll come over here and pick fights with us every now and then because it's fun and why not, right? We're soft targets. But you think that they don't know about those other, oh, please, honey, yes, they know about that. And they hope you take their advice. They hope you don't listen to me. They hope you do take their advice and try that crap on them so they can do your face in, <laughs> so they can stop chasing you. And conveniently after they have sex with you. Okay. We got men in the chat saying first lesson, learn thy enemy. Hello. Why do you think they don't put those channels on blast? Why would they do that and let you know that they're on to you? Why would they do that? Come on now. You're talking about men who've gone to the military and learn. Come on now. Read the 48 laws of power. You'll get it. Any questions, ladies? I feel bad for them sometimes. Yeah. What a good lesson we have in store. To, yeah. How to really love a man. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you have any father-daughter scars, it's going to be hard for you to love a man. It's going to be impossible. Your ability to love a man with father and daughter scars is going to be very, very difficult. And the reason why I say that is because relationships with men trigger us and whatever happened to us as little girls is triggered when we're involved with a man. It's the same energy. It's, 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 it's that same frequency. It's like father and daughter is sort of like the template on how a man is supposed to treat you. Daddy listens to you. Daddy prioritizes you. So should your husband. Right. So should the father of your children, your husband should prioritize you. Absolutely. Right. And we learn that from how our fathers taught. But if we didn't get that, if there's that void, right. Daddy was inconsistent. Daddy was all over the place. Daddy let us down. Right. Or our stepfather who stood in for our daddy was grimy, did some grimy things to us. Guess what? We don't have a very good frame of reference for men, for masculinity, for manhood. And that transfers over into our relationships. And we show up saying, you know what? That's not going to happen to me. Our subconscious is sitting there, the undercurrent of our motivation. And what our subconscious does, it says, he's never going to hurt me again. So I'm going to go into this new relationship, setting my boundaries. I, you go into a relationship barking. You don't think you're barking, but you're barking. Just because you sound sweet, say my boundaries, my, you, you're barking because that's how it comes off to a man, right? You're coming off like a school teacher. You know, the first day of school, these are the rules for the class, everybody. You sound like that. Ew. There's nothing sexual about that, right? It's nothing sexy. It's nothing attractive about that, right? You, you, you can't help it because your subconscious has said, hey, 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 don't get, go, don't, don't get fooled with that again. You remember when you were six years old, that happened to you. You remember when you were 15, that happened to you. 
don't do it again. Don't let him do it again. And it's not that guy. It's the your, your perpetrator, the guy that hurt you. You, every man subconsciously is the guy that hurt you until you get therapy, until you meet the Lord Jesus Christ and he heals you supernaturally and you get therapy because I, I believe people need both. Listen, it's going to be tough for you to love a man because you're trying to give him something you can't give. And being feminine is going to be hard for you. As soon as you're triggered, boom, you're back into your old ways again. I'm not saying once you get on your feminine journey, you don't have days that are challenging. I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying you're perfect. But what I am saying is that you're cognizant of that. And you say, you know what? That was wrong. I stepped out of line. I made a mistake. Let me fix. That is a woman that's healing. And that's another thing. Going around saying you're healing all the time. I'm healing. That's another thing. You're basically telling a man you're not emotionally ready for a relationship. Of course, he's not going to call you back. Oh, I'm 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 celibate. Why would you tell a man you're celibate? Why is that his business? Please, why is that his business? You just met this man. What you're doing? What men here is? I'm promiscuous, and I've had a lot of short-term connections is taking its toll on me emotionally. And the only way I know to exercise self-discipline is to be celibate. That's what men hear. And that's why they don't call you back. <laughs> now you can be abstinent is a better and, and research the differences. There are differences. Abstinent. Okay. I'm abstinent until I get married. That's better then saying I'm celibate because if you run into a seasoned player, <laughs> a seasoned player is going to, uh-huh, you celibate, huh? He's going to, hey, baby, I'm going to cook you dinner. Come on over to my house. He's going to cook you dinner, serve you a couple of glasses of wine, and the next thing you know, his hand is up your shirt, and here you are nine months later talking about you were celibate. See what I'm saying? See, and he's like, uh-huh. Oh, and then he's going to really try to slut you out, too, if he can. Oh, she's celibate, huh? Oh, you a church girl, huh? Uh-huh. Let me see you get down there and suck it. I'm just being honest with you. That's how men talk. That's how they think. Oh, you a church girl, huh? Let me see how freaky I can get you. Oh, you a church girl, huh? Oh, you pray? You pray? Really? Well, come first of the month when that rent is short. What won't you do to make rent? That's how men think. They're like, uh-huh. Let's wait till she get into a financial bind and let's see how, how much she prays and how much faith she has in her God. That's how a lot of men think. Huh? What won't she do to make ends meet? Oh, she she's short her car note. They're about to repossess her car. Uh-huh. Tell her to pray. Or will she take this money and do something strange for some change? It's men that think like that, baby. This real, this grown woman talk right here. You better be careful what you tell these men. They will test you. Well, when it comes to telling them what you're going to do and what you're not going to do, oh, they're going to try that. that. That that they will test. But generally speaking, not knowing you, <laughs> not knowing you, <laughs> they're not just out here testing people they don't know. But once you say I'm celibate, oh, that's a test coming, baby. Now, unless he's truly like a good guy and he's like, yeah, okay, um, he's going to leave you alone. But the majority of these guys, they see that as a challenge. Celibate, really? When's the last time you had sex? 13 years ago? Really? Yeah, she horny. Just about, a, just about, it. Uh, give me five minutes. Let me serve her some Italian food because she love Italian. Give her a couple of glasses of wine and she's mine. That's what he's thinking. <laughs> Come on now, this is grown woman talk. No more little girl talk. Uh-uh, this is grown woman talk. You want to tell a man you celibate? Be my guest. You want to tell a man you're a good girl? Be, you don't go around saying you're a good girl. Hello. That's just for us to say amongst ourselves. We don't got, I'm a good girl. No, girl, no. Oh, you a good girl, huh? 
really? Let me see what kind of freaky stuff I can get her into. And the moment he gets you into a, a sexual conversation, he's going, got her. He's going, oh, I knew she was an undercover freak. I knew all that stuff she was talking about was fake. I knew she was a phony. Oh, she a church girl, huh? Well, that ain't what she did last night on top of me. Huh? I'm a church girl. I love the Lord. You better be careful what you tell these dudes, huh? Huh? They are they will test it. Oh, you oh, you love the Lord, huh? You love the Lord. <laughs> you better watch what you tell these men, honey. This is grown woman talk. 2024, no more baby talk. If you want baby talk, go to another channel. This is grown woman talk. Men want women. And if you go into go into these relationships with father and daughter scars, you are literally showing up emotionally as a child. I love you, but that's how you show up. Hello? You are showing up emotionally as a child. Is that what you want to do with your four-year-old self? Is put your four-year-old self in the line of fire? Or do you want to put your grown woman self out there? Because that's what we do emotionally. When we don't heal, you know what we do? We put the little girl version of ourselves out there on the front line. And the little girl of us takes all that, all that. It takes all of that all over again. That's what going without therapy does. And then, God forbid, you pick up a mic and try to coach another woman. You coach her to do exactly what you're doing. To show up as a little girl in front of grown men. I am not a little girl, baby. Try it if you want to. You will be blocked and deleted in a heartbeat. Never let a man know that you're afraid of losing him. Because that's exactly what will happen. You will lose him. He will stop chasing. The moment you act like, oh, my God. No, it, it's one thing to fight for marriage. It's another thing to let a man just walk all over you. And women do that just for some guy that's screwing. It, it blows my mind. <laughs> la, la, you're funny. It blows my mind. How you could let some rando walk all over the little girl version of you. Because that's what we show up in the relationship as when we don't get, and we all need therapy. Let me say that again. We all need therapy. There's not one person on this planet that doesn't need therapy. You know how we grew up? You know what we grew up watching? We grew up watching Rhoda, and 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 I'm talking to the extras now. We grew up rock watching Julia, Mary Tyler Moore, Murphy Brown, Rhoda, Maude, <laughs> Star, uh, uh, Cagney and Lacey, Police Woman. We grew up watching women without men, basically. We grew up watching feminist TV. You don't think we need therapy to understand men? And don't think you can circumvent this by not talking about not having a father or reinventing your childhood. NYP Blue. <laughs> don't think you can reinvent your childhood and, and gloss over your scars. These men out here don't want to be suckers. And trust me, they can scout out a woman with father-daughter scars better than I can. And I'm good. I'm good. I can listen to a woman five minutes and I can tell she got a daddy scar. But these men are better at it than I am. They sleep with you. I don't. They sleep with you. They get you open. So they know. They know how to push those buttons. Right? They know how to get, get, get inside. Right? So don't think reinventing your past is going to... Hide the fact that you have father-daughter scars. Don't think lying about your past is going to hide your father-daughter scars. It won't. Just get help. Just get help. Because what happens when you lie about it and a man finds out that you lied about your past, he feels justified in the next events to follow. 
And you're thinking, well, if I show up like a little girl, if I show up like a princess, he's going to take care. Now, a grown one, a grown man does not want a princess. He wants a queen. A grown man cannot marry a queen, uh, a princess. He can't marry a princess. That's weird. He marries a queen. I'm not talking about that stuff you see over in London, in England. I'm talking about in real life. He cannot build an empire with a princess. He can build an empire with a queen because the queen knows how to move the board. She's very influential. As a matter of fact, she can move farther and faster than the king. For those chess players and every feminine woman under the sound of my voice, if you don't know how to play chess, learn. Because I guarantee you, your masters of the universe man knows how to play chess, by the way. Shout out to my babies here in Ohio playing chess. Come on, baby. Listen, if you don't know how to play chess, learn. It teaches you about life. The king can only move one square at a time in either direction. The queen, however, she's all over the place. And you know what she's doing? She's protecting her king. She's protecting her kingdom. Notice there's no princesses in chess. There's none. There's knights. There's bishops. There's rooks. And there's pawns, not princesses. And a lot of women think that they're princesses and they're just pawns. This is why they stopped chasing. Because they realize, I don't have a queen here. I have a pawn. She's not even a bishop or a knight. She's not even a rook. What can I do with this? She's a pawn. Yes, pawns can be promoted. Absolutely. Pawns can be promoted, but my God, look how many steps you have to do to get a pawn promoted. Have you ever played chess? Give me the least amount of moves uh, uh, that can be made before a pawn gets promoted. For you chest enthusiast. Look how many moves does it take? How much outsmarting does it take for a pawn to get promoted? There's a reason for that. Because it ain't supposed to happen. It can. But it's not supposed to happen often. You have so many barriers. So many pieces in front of it. And you have to kind of strategically outthink your opponent to promote the pawn. It's an exception to the rule. Most games do not promote pawns. Now, I have to check, check with my husband on that. But most games in chess, they do not promote a pawn. It's usually a checkmate before that happens. A pawn getting promoted is getting promoted to a higher uh, position on the board Go to chess.com, y'all. I might have a chess tournament on chess.com for everybody. For all the feminine ladies, we might have a, a chess tournament. Listen, when a, a, a pawn gets promoted, that is rare. You know, it's it's not it's not frequent, right? But it happens. It happens. And so you have a lot of princesses that are waiting to get promoted. And, you know... Life is too short. I come on the board as a queen, baby. I make moves. I see stuff my man doesn't even see. That's a help me. Baby, I don't know about that one. Have you thought about this? Baby, eighth rank. Come on, Miss Bifford. Come on. Look, I come on the board like a queen. Baby, have you thought about this? I was thinking we could do that. What do you think, baby? How can I help you do this? That's a queen, a princess. Gimme, 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 gimme. 50 year old women online talking about gimme, gimme, gimme. Are you serious? Because you don't really know how to love a man because you haven't really been loved by a father. Ladies, what you think? She says she's learning golf this year. Good, 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 good. Invest in some, some good golf clubs. Good, good, good. Learn how to play chess, ladies. Go on chess.com or chess for kids, which is really good because it, it really makes it really simple for you. Um, chess.com, go play. There's some um, YouTube channels that teach you how to play chess. 
They teach you the basics of chess. I would thank you so much, Angel. I would I would learn chess if I want a Masters of the Universe guy. <coughs> trust me, it comes in handy. I do the basics of chess, but I didn't know my husband was into it like that. And I'm kind of good. My ranking has increased. I'm kind of good. I'm getting into my my what you call it strategies. I'm getting there. But ladies, men don't need you to be. Uh, a chess master. They just need you to understand the game. Come on the board like a queen, not a pawn. No, you're not a bishop. No, you're not a knight. That's for his friends. His parents. His parents are rooks. His his friends are knights and 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 bishops. You and and, and pawns are his business associates. You, my lady or a queen. So act like it. You're not a little girl anymore. I'm not going to hold your hand anymore. Our content is for grown women. You are a queen. And if you come on the board as a pawn, you get sacrificed. You will learn that quickly. I don't want to be a pawn. I don't want to be a princess because they get sacrificed. Every time they talk about princesses in movies, she's always marrying somebody she doesn't want to marry. She's always getting bargained off to, to keep countries from colliding in wars. She's auctioned off to the highest bidder to save the kingdom. <laughs> why, why do you think that is? Because the princess is just another pawn. Hello? And we have grown women going around talking about their princesses. That's another phrase that just men are like, what? So I'm supposed to have a baby by a princess? Come on now. I want a queen. Come to the board like a queen. Queens get half a million dollar houses. Queens get estates. Queens get money. Huh? Queens know how to handle estates when their husbands are sick. Queens know how to get in that chairman chair, that CEO chair, and come in that board meeting like what? I'm standing in for my husband today. Princesses, oh, oh my God, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what to do. Just tell me how much money I get in my bank account because my husband's dad. <laughs> A queen, she walks in that boardroom. My husband's not here, but he might as well be because I'm here for him. That's a queen. Huh? So the question is, which one, you, wife energy, there you go. Which one are you? And our question for the year is, what do you want? What do you want? I want you to answer that question for me. That's everybody's homework. What do you want? What do you want? So I'm talking about what everybody else wants. What do you want? Because the sooner you figure that out, the sooner you figure out what it is you want, you get it. <laughs> you get it. You get it. Wives are queens. They should be queens. We have queen energy, baby. We come to the board. We come to the board looking to the side, looking to the front, looking to the back. Look, you can't. There was something that happened, and I said, wait. I understand people sometimes have problems with me, but having problems with my husband, you have an instant enemy for life. You can't pick at my husband and not get me. Oh, baby, I'm like little scrappy. I'm on your foot. I'm on that pants leg, and I will now and now and now. You cannot come for my husband. No, you cannot. I know people get on me. I I, I get that. I'm a content creator. I get that. Uh, whatever. I live. But when you come for my husband... Who doesn't even mean, he doesn't mean bad by anybody. Like I say stuff that offends people. So I get it. But my husband, come on now. You got an enemy for life, bro. You got an enemy. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to take you out. Not my husband. No, no, no. That's my family you talking about now. Come on now. I'm his queen for a reason. I take people out. I'm on the board for a reason. Oh, yeah, when I get the opportunity. And when I get the opportunity. And when I get the opportunity, I'm going to protect my queen, my king. I'm going to protect my king. 
when I get the opportunity as his queen, I'm going to protect my king. You have an enemy for life. You come for my husband. Oh, I'm going to get you. And queens, when that queen come out that back rank, you know you got problems. Life is about to get real for you in that game. When that queen gets in the game and she get mobile. Oh, and you, gotta, you try to force a queen trade, right? You try to get me to argue with other women. You try to get me to fight with other women. No, 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 no. Queens don't have to do that. No, no, they can maneuver behind a queen trade. We don't do queen trades. We fight for our families. What if in-laws come for your family? You're still his queen. You're still his queen. And they come for you like, you know, not too much on my husband. Well, your husband did such, not too much on him now. Not too much on him. They know that they can't talk bad about my husband in front of me because I'm like little scrappy. It's only so much I'm going to take now. Not too much on my husband now because I got a slick mouth and I'm going to say what's true. I'm going to say what's true about you, baby. You're going to be lying about my husband, but I'm going to tell the truth about you. If you come to <laughs> listen, Queens, baby. Huh? In-laws, the same thing. Not too much on my husband now. And they and, and usually when you do that, they fall back because that's their that's their family. And you're up here, someone who married into the family, <laughs> and you're you're fighting for him more than, than they are. That's weird. They're like, oh, oh, she's a real one. Now, if your husband's out here committing crimes and knocking people off and doing stuff like that, they're looking at you weird. Because he's not a man of character and high standard, a uh, 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 man of good character. So they're like, you can't, you must be grimy because your man is grimy. That's different. But when you're talking about just, just they're just extra critical of him or something like, not too much on my husband now. Come on now. I'm sitting right here. Not too much about my husband. <laughs> okay. Listen. Don't be a pawn. Come to the board like a queen. Okay? Come to the board like a queen and you don't have to ask for anything. Because what most women don't understand, when you make it about a man, he makes everything else about you. You're welcome. She said, or he said, this sounds a thin line between alpha woman and queen. Alpha woman is trying to be in control. I'm not trying to be in control. I'm protecting my family. There's a difference. Alpha women like control. Alpha women are like, um, they can tend to uh, attach Jezebel spirits, meaning they manipulate people, take people out, hurt people in their process. I'm not trying to hurt people. I'm protecting my family. There's a difference. A wife, because they'll say um, a wife is being unfeminine by, you know, stepping to a woman that's trying to make passes at her husband. No, she's protecting her family, whore. Stop it. She's protecting her family. And when you get a man to marry you, you will understand that. You're going to protect that. It took you forever to meet this man to marry you and start a family with you. You're just going to let him walk off in the sunset with some whore? No, you're going to step. No, this is my husband and my family. Step back. That's exactly what you're going to do. Hello? Some woman come pushing up on your fiance. Wait a minute now. The ring is on my finger. Step back. <laughs> this is my family. I'm building here. Huh? You trying to be a pawn and you out of you out of your your pay your pay your above you your below you up your pay grade. Come on now. You stepped out. Alpha energy is controlling the board. I'm not trying to control the board. I'm responding to the board. The board is attacking my husband. The, the, the whole premise is to take my husband out. The king is your husband. They're trying to take your husband out. You got to move to the left, move diagonal, move backwards, move forwards. You take pieces out. I'm taking you out if you attack my king. Because once you attack my king, the game is over. An alpha woman is saying, I'm going to manipulate people to do what I want. I'm going to be controlling. I'm going to dominate. 
that's alpha energy. Queen energy says, oh, oh, you trying to come? Oh, oh, okay. You trying to come for my man? Let me move over this way. Let me move over that. Let me warn my husband what I saw. Oh, you trying to make a pass at me? You supposed to be his friend? Oh, I got you. He is not your friend. Why you say that, baby? I just, he's not your friend. Well, why you say he's just not your friend? <laughs> come on now. That's queen energy. I wouldn't trust him with the money. Why you say that? I just, I wouldn't trust you with the money. Well, why you say that? I just, I just, it's feminine instinct. And once he gets to know you, uh, he knows you, he is going to figure out when my wife says something, I should probably listen. That's a wise man. There's no need to dominate. There's no need to fuss and nag him. There's no need. You need to listen to me. You need to listen. There's no need to do that. It's just once you make that queen energy and you make those queen moves enough, your husband goes, when my wife says something, I'm listening. A wise man is going to do that. You don't need to browbeat them. You know, I make more than you. You need to listen to me. Okay. Yeah. That's the recipe to get cheated on. Um, but when you don't have to do all of that. Just be a queen. Just be a queen. Hey, baby, I'm just looking at things and. Hey, baby, um, I had some free time and I set up this website for your business. What do you think about that? Nine times out of 10, he's going to like it because he probably had a crappy website anyway. And he likes it. He's like, oh, she took time out of her busy schedule to make this for me. Guess who has influence? The wife who's constantly complaining and nagging or the woman who just, hey, baby, I was thinking about you and I think this will benefit you. Or, hey, I found this at the shop and I think this will go great in your office. What do you think? Which wife has more influence? Wife A, who's always, rah, 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 or wife B, hey, baby, I saw this and I think this would be great. What do you think? I saw this. This would look great on your desk. What do you think? Hey, I found this company that will do excellent for your website security. What do you think? Which wife is going to have more influence? Wife A, or wife B? Hey, baby, I was thinking, da 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 da, -da. Who has more influence? <laughs> anyway, let me get out of here and take some medicine because my nose is doing the most. Ladies, welcome to 2024. Fellas, for those of you who listen and support, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody out there supporting me. Look, you can find me on... Um, Mrs. Nicole Michelle, pretty much on every platform. Our main website, theinnerbeautymovement.com. Um, Mrs. Nicole Michelle.com is this our uh, miscellaneous links. You can download our app, Feminine Elite Society app. Shout out to all of you who signed up over the, the 12 days of Christmas um, uh, special offer. Um, shout out to you, your month of January. Make sure you do not renew so I can go in the system and gift you 30 uh, days free on the app. Um, so yeah, if you want to follow us, go feminine elite society app on Apple and Google. We're the only branded app that teaches you how to elevate and become a wife on the, in the same spot. Um, go ahead and sign up for that. Then that offer is expired, but you're still more than welcome to get on the app. And that's for women that want to elevate. For those of you who are interested in hearing Tony and I chop it up, uh, it's, Listen, it's not for the faint of heart. We do not hold back. It is us unfiltered. You can go sign up for Patreon. The link is in the description box. And um, you can listen to those uh, right now, really. You can go. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm going to go lay down after this. Um, oh, wait. I got to get his dinner. Uh, we might have to eat out today. I don't feel good. <laughs> I don't feel good. Um, I think I might have some. No, I don't have leftovers. We might have to figure something out. Um, but I feel crappy. Uh, but you can go download the app, Feminine Elite Society app, and um, for elevation and all that, Patreon, and just keep a lookout for our courses coming. And Happy New Year, you all. Happy New Year. This is an indication of where we're going this year. 
No holding back. No more princess energy. All queens. Because you are a queen. You're queens in training. You're my Ruth. And I'm your Naomi. And I will not stop until you get your Boaz. Okay? Boaz, if you read the book of Ruth, Boaz was no slouch. And Ruth was mentored. She didn't go down. Ah, 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 I ain't got a dress like that. Ah, 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 ah. No, she's like, yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll do what you say. And guess what? She got her masters of the universe. In the Bible days, he was considered a master of the universe. If you listen to me, you're going to win. Shout out to the ladies uh, that I'll be talking to this week. I'm looking forward to meeting you and getting to know you. And you can always stay in contact with me. Follow me on IG for those women that are specifically traditional. Like all women can follow me. Don't get me wrong. But women who are traditional and you kind of want a sense of presentation and all of that. IG and my Facebook is the place to go. Um, my Facebook family is a little finicky with that. So I kind of put all of that content on IG. Facebook is a little finicky with that. But IG, y'all love that content. So I'm going to keep that content coming. It's in my stories. So you have to check my stories often to see that. Um, and I can kind of give you style inspos and things like that, that traditional men like and stuff you need to get rid of. That's going to be in my, st in my story section. So you kind of want to follow me so you can stay on top of that. And I do watch my spaces for trolls and troublemakers because I want this to be a, a peaceful place. And I am on Twitch as well. Um, so if you're on Twitch and you want to listen to me while you play your games and stuff like that, I'm there too. All right, ladies, do you like this new time slot? I'm just trying it out to see um, if you like this new time slot or if I need to go back to one o'clock. We'll see. I'll take a look at the analytics and see what's good. But this was fun. <sighs> Remember, I love you and Jesus Christ loves you. And until the next time, keep the faith, everybody. Peace out.